<coughs> we'll be fine. Hey, don't worry. We record all our mods locally anyway. It's fine. Yeah, immortality sounds like the worst, worst punishment in, in known to men. I think I thought it was cool, probably until I watched that episode of Star Trek. <laughs> and I was like, oh god. Actually, this is horrible. Ah, uh, yes, yes, we've all been the dog. Yeah, cause I, what do you think? I wasn't sure what the dog was supposed to represent, but I, I think it's the guardian, like someone who protects the continuum for a while, like a watchdog. That's what I thought the dog was supposed to be. Uh, at a certain point, they all have to, like, take a shift at protecting or doing something. Yeah, like the guardian. That was my, that was my takeaway from the dog. When you consider just in the scholars, they will find a solution. Well, that was the argument in Voyager, ultimately, is uh, the guy who's taking them around, he was arguing he should be allowed to end his life. But they imprisoned, they imprisoned him in an asteroid for like thousands of years or something, so he couldn't do it. They put him in jail. I, I remember that. They put him in jail for eons or something because he was trying to kill himself. Debate and discourse. All right, give me more lore, baby. Greetings, little one. Come to debate and at such a young age. How wonderful. Shall we retire to the benches and settle on a topic? Oh, my apologies for jumping to conclusions. My friends are not quite as fond of the Hall of Rhetoric as I am. So I have a habit of chatting up any potential conversation partners. So if you're not here to debate, I presume you're here to learn about the mysterious and esoteric goings on here. It would be my pleasure to act as your tutor in these matters, if you will indulge me. The Hall of Rhetoric, as its name indicates, a place where citizens may freely gather to discuss and debate all manner of topics. The central forum is ideal for open discourse, but smaller rooms are available for those desiring more intimate conversation. Oh, and there is a wealth of reading material concerning rhetorical techniques and history penned by the greatest minds on offer as well. Should you wish to refine your techniques through self-study? To my mind, however, rhetoric is a living, breathing thing that is best experienced in the moments of conception and execution. Perhaps a demonstration would best serve to further your education. I saw a contemporary of mine engaged in a lively debate earlier, just outside the hall. Go and see if they are still there, and issue to them my personal invitation to a friendly battle of wits. Okay. <laughs> okay. Do we want to get into a battle of wits with a city... I mean, it's like Alexandria, almost. Alexandria. That is precisely my point. Their obsession with the so-called mandate to approve only the most beneficial concepts for wider distribution, never mind the ridiculous subjectivity of their criteria, has led the Bureau of Architect to astray from its original purpose. Huh? Have you business with me, child? Regardless, I am in the middle of a heated discussion with my partner. Come back later. No, no, no. My position has nothing to do with the intrinsic value of unique identity and whether or not it is retained. Rather, I posit that the reproductions of a given concept are inherently imperfect, and thus they are themselves unique, albeit in a minor but significant degrees, and most importantly, this variance is not to be condemned, but celebrated. Better that that to strive in vain for an impossible standard that even if met, would leave us lesser for lack of diversity. The Amaratines appear to be engrossed in their debate, utterly deaf to you and your pleas for attention. Can I shout at them? My, aren't you a stubborn little bugger? Strangely endearing, I must admit. But we have all the time in the world. Why are you so insistent that I speak with you this very instant? Ah, you are acquainted with that chatterbox. I suppose I do owe them a debate or two. Now is as good occasion as any. So be it.
All right. Let's go and watch two people debate. Woohoo! <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine. He's a Redditor. Jesus Christ. I actually kind of get off on reading uh, Reddit comment chains. They're just insanity. I mean, how do you get a banana to Donald Trump in like three moves? Even on my own videos. I've seen so many videos where we're talking about like a new dungeon and then it'll, the first comment will be like, oh, sick video. Nice one, Mike. Three comments later, it's like, but Hitler did nothing wrong. If you really think about it, you're like, how the fuck did you get? F I mean, how is that even possible? How is that even possible that you managed to get there in such a swift motion? Absolute madness. So you found my friend. Thank you, little one. And without further ado, let us commence the promised debate. Hey, this is going to get fiery. Real fiery. As to the matter of what subject we shall debate today, I propose the recent calamity which has befallen our friends across the pond. What say you? The singular point of contention is, of course, whether or not Amaro should have intervened on their behalf. I believe we should. The scale of the disaster which threatens that distant metropolis is of a scale heretofore unseen, and so equally considerable resources must be committed to counteracting its effects. I disagree. The scale concerns me less than the nature of the proposition itself. Who are we to unilaterally intervene in the affairs of those half a world away? Are we to be the saviours of one and all? Such arrogance may well lead to our own downfall. Hmm. While I understand your concerns from a philosophical standpoint, I fear you are too quick to dismiss practical considerations out of a desire to maintain an unassailable moral authority. But let us, you and I, hold here for the present and offer the floor to our young student. You have heard our opening salvos in this debate concerning the fate of our neighbours across the sea. What is your opinion on the matter? To ignore the plight of those one might conceivably save is not wisdom, it's indolence. We cannot save everyone. Sometimes it's all we can do to save ourselves. Ah, uh, I'm personally of the belief that... You never know where the next magnificent thing is coming from, so we should probably not blow each other up and help when we can. That's my personal feeling on it. It's like, if everybody's doing good, I'm doing good. Indeed, indeed. Same can be said regarding one of the opinions on the morality of intervention. There is a clear and undeniable benefit to Armorot in using this situation as a testbed for our newest creations, that we might develop and refine our defences against a potential threat to our own fair city. How readily you see the moral high ground. Is that our young friend's point that we have an ethical obligation to aid those in need? And not only do you instead elect to focus on the benefit to Amorot alone, you also deprive our distant neighbours of the agency to determine their own fate. misunderstand me. What benefits Armorot benefits all creation. I firmly believe for the knowledge and wisdom we stand to gain from intervention can then be shared with others, empowering everyone to more effectively surmount similar trials in the future. That's a toughie. <laughs> True and real. Not some new ones to all this. <laughs> I must say, it's been far too long since I engaged in such a refreshing exchange of ideas. My colleague was equally delighted by the opportunity, you may be assured. Some decry it as little more than an academic exercise, after all. We failed to reach a meaningful consensus, but I dare say they missed the forest for the trees. Are we not more enlightened by the experience? Have we not been exposed to a greater variety of viewpoints? 
Is there not value in this alone? I truly believe we are blessed to be part of society that exalts the free exchange of ideas, and that encourages active participation in the public discourse. This may have been no more than your first foray into the exciting world of rhetoric, but I sense you have the soul of a debater in you. You may well have the potential to change Amorot in ways no one has ever thought possible. I shall be watching your trajectory with great interest, my good friend. Wait till you motherfuckers see Twitter. <laughs> you have no idea. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, debate's all fine and well, mate. Believe me, but <laughs> when you throw wide the gates, when you throw wide the gates, I'm just warning you, there's some shit coming through that gate you weren't expecting. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying is uh, when you throw wide the gates. Woo! <laughs> so the trolley may pass. Twilly is not de Twitter is not debating it's shitting. I love Twitter. Some like some days I love Twitter. Some days I fucking hate Twitter. It's so much. So so much. Some days I need to switch off. I am not taking my phone with me to Mexico, man. I am going internet free. Ten days of internet free. Got the old brain reset. Twitter is the culprit of everything wrong. I wouldn't say that, but... You don't know what kind of opinions are out there until you're exposed to everybody. And then you're like, oh, Jesus. Is debate, hey, Team America, is debate a required thing in your high schools? We don't have debate here. I took debate in college. Well, I see it a lot in American movies. It's optional. Yeah, your school system is kind of interesting because I hear, I, I don't quite understand it. Because uh, what I've picked up has basically been for amalgamation of movies, right? But... I, I understand that you have, like, a required amount of courses that you take in your high school, but then there's quite a number of optional things which help you get into college. Oh, one sec. Oh, that's a It's like a point system or something. Probably extra classes you can take. To try and get above the bare minimum. Just gotta have my sandwich, dudes. Yeah, 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 yeah. No points. It's just highly subjective. Each area state will have its own requirements. Okay. So, there are points. I, I thought there was a point system or something like that. Because Do you guys have to, like, write an essay to get into university like I did? No. Oh, it depends on the college. Yeah, what you guys call college, we call university. I think some of your colleges are called universities. Right? Well, what's your age ranges? Our college is 16 to 18. Oh, I had to do my personal statement. It looks like it's different for every state, then. Oh, I'm surprised how non-unified stuff like education is in, in the US. It's so strange. Yeah, well, I, I know it's changed a bit now since I was doing the, the base education, but for me, it was... Um, you go to uh, basic school till 11... 11 to 16 is high school, 16 to 18 is college, and university is post that. Do 
The other is 18 to 20. Well, 18 plus, I assume. There's no age restriction at university, right? It's more profitable that way. <laughs> I'm just eating a sandwich. That's why I know Cam. Well, it's changed now because I think you have to go to college in the UK now. You were allowed to leave education at 16 when I was there. A college all an apprenticeship. That's good. A-levels are college, yes. We do GCSE qualifications in high school. A-levels are college. I'm actually looking forward to seeing my kids start. Uh, th my the school my kids go to starts doing SAT soon for my older son. I'm bound to fuck up on one of these tests where he shows them me. Who has free universities? Is it Finland? Is your university free? I got free high school, free college. I had to pay for university, though. I'm still paying. Lol. Germany, Finland, Scot Oh, Scotland does have it. Yeah, yeah. Norway's free. Yeah. France, too. I hate looking at the uh, remaining student loan thing. Denmark pays you to stay in education, does it? Uh, my university was really expensive. My course was four years long. I think it was 68. 68k, I think it was. No, for four years, for four years. years ago. It was not 30 years ago. It's not 30 years ago. Cheeky bastards. Now how much is it in the US though? How much is a university course in the US? Oh, it varies depending on the, um, the school, yeah. Oh, I mean... Anywhere from 15 to 90k a year, Jesus Christ. That's like a YouTube revenue prediction. This YouTube channel earns somewhere between $5,000 a month and half a million. <laughs> Something like that.
I like YouTube, it skews high. Yeah, true. True, true, true. <laughs> Your brother's masters cost 250k. Shit, man. Are they zero interest? I bet not in the US, right? Or low interest? Like, what's the interest on a student loan in the US? Seven to eight percent, you know. On two hundred and fifty k. Oh man. Still got some of the best schools in the world over there. Mm. For the rich, yeah. It always bothers me when you see those, um, you know, the pictures of Harvard and stuff. And they're like the most... It's like churches. You know, they're like the most decadent places in the world. You're like, what's going on here? What's happening? I was always told in sales. In my old sales job. Like, when I was offered company cars. It's like, don't get the most expensive car. Because they have things like... I could have chose, like, um... Like a 7 Series, right? A BMW 7 Series. Not a lot like a Bentley, but it's still a pretty expensive car. But if I turn up to try and sell vehicles to someone in a car like that, you just look like you're ripping them off. And it just gives the wrong impression. Like, turn up in something modest, but not too modest, because then it looks like you can't sell anything and your cars are shit. You've got to find that middle ground somewhere. Right? <laughs> you gotta find that middle ground. Don't turn up in a shit car, because that looks like you're bobbins at what you do. But also don't turn up in something that's amazing. Because <laughs> that's also gonna be a problem as well. You know what I mean? It's hard. Hey, Skoda's actually picked up. I sold I sold probably like six or seven hundred Skodas in my last year of doing my old job. Skoda Octavias were Pog Champ. Super low tax, giga reliable, really comfy, came with loads of good stuff. I was part of the Skoda conversion wave. Skodas actually just turned their shit around and were awesome. They're, they're awesome. Skodas are well good. At least they were when I was in the car business. I'm not in it anymore, but... I genuinely looked for a Skoda when I had to buy a car last week. I was like, I'll take a Skoda. And Emma still turned her nose up at it. It's like, eh, Skoda. I was like, Skodas are fucking awesome. They're awesome. Right, I was going to wash my hands, guys, and then we're MSQing. Sandwiches consumed. We are set for the...
Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, ether currents got. Ether currents gained. Whew. Bring it home, Shadowbringers. Let's ride home, baby. Let's ride home. This is called a stall, guys. This is a stall. Can this hurry up along? Yeah, I see that, but... <laughs> VIP! I've installed OBS! VIP! I've installed OBS! Sorry. <laughs> you fucking idiot, lion. Floor Inspector, your application is ready for collection. As your residency was approved by Emmett Selk himself, further forms of identification will not be required. Here are your application documents. Submit them to the Bureau of the Secretariat and the clerk will issue you with a visitor's writ for the capital. <laughs> Sorry. It's not my fault. Some of us have been here since Warcraft 3. No cutting. Well, I, I did feel kind of bad for Noble, who did queue up to get into the, the last party we threw. Like, to be polite, he did queue up to get in. And then we came rolling past in 60 cars. Get out of the way. I didn't know he'd been queuing up. Then we rolled deep with fucking 60 cars. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> it's being all polite and stuff. Pleb. Well, he'll know next time, won't he? He'll know next time. <clears throat> That'll teach him. I can't wait till our next party. We are going to tear Ishgard a new one. An absolute new one. It's going to be awesome. We're going to have a rager in Ishgard. Remember, it's steam bath themed. Steam bath themed. Get your towels ready and your flippy floppies. <clears throat> Hit that Mexico with Puerto Valletta. I don't know the words. Uh, did you see the Metaverse rave for the launch? No, no I didn't. No, I didn't see that. I've a tuned. Yeah, I've a tuned. I'm good. I'm good. Hello, Mr. Resiel. Hello to you, sir. Is it going to be cold? It's never cold. Never cold. Open sesame? <laughs> I feel like I'm on trial. Am I on trial? Hey! Please. Visiting the capital, are we? Please take a seat. Your name will be called once your application has been processed. Do I really need to wait? Oh my... Ha! 
Ha! You all got moved. Got my own bench. Oh no. Not now. Not now. Not now. <laughs> May I? You, I think, are from a time beyond ours. Have you followed in the wake of Edgy Salad? Nay, there is no cause for alarm. I am simply a shade, here and not here. I know only that my name is Hytholodeus, and that this city is a recreation, a phantom moment plucked from the well of history. These others seem unaware of their pale existence. I wonder if Emmett Selt's mind was distracted when it came to my reconstruct constitution. A stray thaw that would have been enough. Hythlodeus will realize the truth, for example. We were close friends once, you see. Yet in spite of my perception, I play the same role as the rest, a bit part, meant to bring colour and noise to this well-crafted stage. Too much scrutiny, and we shall burst like the fragile bubbles we are. Thus I tell you again, my presence is not to concern you. I wish only to share your company whilst we wait. If you've come this far, then you know of the catastrophe which awaits us on our morrow. The final days. What began as isolated incidents soon swelled into a world-spanning threat. The convocation of 14, well, it was 13 at the time endeavoured to create a will for our star. They would repair the fundamental laws of order and halt the spread of destruction. But creation on such a scale required an immense source of power. Of those of us who still lived, Nearly half offered up their lives in the name of salvation. And from their sacrifice, Zodiac was born, just as we had hoped. He reached forth and halted the march of oblivion. Yet on how the star had suffered, so many species lost. The land was blighted, the waters poisoned, and even the wind had ceased to blow. Once more did our people give of themselves to Zodiac. Another half of our race sacrificed to cleanse the world, to ensure that trees and grasses and myriad tiny lives would sprout and grow and flourish. cycle of life had begun anew, and we reconsidered the means by which we might protect it. The convocation decided thus, we would nurture our world until it was bursting with vitality. Then, when the time was right, we would offer some portion of its living energy to Zodiac. In return, 
He would restore us to those brethren whose souls had fed his strength. And together, we would resume our role as stewards. There were, however, those who disagreed with this plan. They argued that enough had been sacrificed to Zodiac, that this new world should belong to the lives of the newly born. These dissidents surrendered their life energies to the creation of Hydlin, an incarnation of their opposing belief, and for the first time in history, our people stood divided. Know you then, how this conflict ended? Hmm. I thought you might. <clears throat> the worst part of this is, and the point they've tried to drill home, Nobody was the bad guy. <laughs> Emmett Selk has ever been a champion for the will of Zodiac. The original plan may have been set back by millennia, but he will have not abandoned his course. He will pay the price for our return by whatever means is necessary. Though he may carry himself with a certain glib ease, Emmett Selk is not a man to bear his burdens lightly. In fact, I imagine they have only grown heavier with every passing century. is truly a terrible weight he has chosen to carry. <clears throat> Law Inspector. Your turn has come. Pray, do not let me keep you. Ah. There was one last thing. You walk with another at your side, yes? I see no definite form, just the faintest suggestion of a second soul. I doubt it's visible to anyone but me. Otherwise, I assume only you can see and hear this ethereal companion. <laughs> Your connection is hardly a coincidence. In our time, the two of you were one. The color of your souls tells the tale. A hue that distinctive cannot be mistaken, no matter how thin the soul is spread. This is just the kind of fate I might expect from one such as she. Surely Emmett Selk has recognized the hint of her in you. Oh my god. <clears throat> we're the 14th and we're the love of Emmett Selk's life.
absolute gits. Get into the chat. Fine. You win. You win. Yes, you win. You win. Fine. You win. You win. Yes, you win. God damn it. <clears throat> God damn it. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Easy win. Easy win. Okay, this story just surpassed Heaven's Ward. That they just did it. It would take something pretty monumental to fuck this up now. That was that was good. That was good. That was good. That is good. <clears throat> Fare you well, my new old friend. May you find what it is you seek. <sighs> we are victorious. <laughs> Yes, 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 I paid up, I paid up. <sighs> We're not finished yet. Your visitor's writ as requested. When you wish to gain admittance to the capital, simply present the document to the attendant within. Let's go. Meeting adjourned, yes. That was good. That was really good. That was good. That was good. That was good. We ride. Why do I feel like I'm gonna feel even worse for Emmett Salk now? I love how it's like, this is so morally grey done right. <clears throat> this was so good. Fuck you, Emmett Salk. <laughs> Still a dick. But I understand your position. It's a great, I mean, that was our first question, right? When we saw the Zodiac. And then Heidelin summoned to destroy the Zodiac. Your instinct is that, like, you know, we, we thought about maybe that the, the, the Asians that had survived were the rulers, the Vorthries of the world. But no. <clears throat> and everybody had a good point. It just led to calamity. Which side would you have gone on there? I would have sided with Heidelin. We gave our lives for this world to flourish, but it is their world now. It's not ours. I would have gone Team Heidelin, I think. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I look at the world like now. I mean, maybe it's my perspective a little bit, but I look at the world for my kids, not for myself. You know? When I look at my kids, I worry about what they're going to grow up with. What's... Look at all the shit we've seen. And the wars. There's been two massive economical disasters in my lifetime. Burdened with so much shit. Wars constantly happening. Coronavirus. My kids grew up in coronavirus. Like, one of my kids missed two years of school because of COVID. And a completely different life to me. So I think of it that way. I, I always think of it in terms of what will the kids get. Hmm. Not crying again today. Fuck you lot. No. Say something funny, Thancred. Finally, you were gone so long. I was on the verge of mounting a rescue party. I'll fared you in your bureaucratic ventures. Gamba, no, no. 
<laughs> Stop. <laughs> You're bad people, you lot. Ah. Oh, I should... Oh my god, it has gotten so bad you're censoring the team discord. Alright, I'm closing team discord. Ah. I see my instincts were correct. And a good thing too. Rianja and I weighed our differences of breaking into the capital. The official entrance is by far the most attractive option. The capital boasteth not a single armed sentry. and seemed that in their time they did not deem it needful to post guards. The windows and doors, however, are heavily warded. Though mightily did we strive, the strength we str <laughs> with strength mundane and magical, we failed to budge them even a fraction of one ill. They actually explained why we didn't open the windows in the fucking sunken cities. Mayhap was simply the case that Emmett Selk's recreation did not extend to their useful function. We didn't try everything, of course. We thought it best to conserve our time and energy for more pressing matters. Speaking of which, Reen and I tried asking about a cure for you. Problem is, these ancients didn't exist beyond armor as today. They will happily tell their own tales, but whenever we attempted to explain our situation, the conversation quickly became muddled. What of you, Flo? It's art worthy of interest said during your efforts to obtain a writ. Uh, well, actually... <laughs> well, uh, well, actually... Great sacrifice of life in exchange for the Brethren's resurrection. They say all the Asian scheming has been leading to this. This time... All this time... As they still mean to enact this plan, then... Things won't end when they're rejoining. Aye. I thought we knew their intentions in full. Restore the world to its former glory, and in turn, empower Zodiac to reclaim his throne as the will of the star. But that was merely a step along the way. I hesitate to put it into words, but we have to assume that following the final rejoining, the Asians mean to draw on the lives of the Source to make their sacrifice to Zodiac. That does seem like the most likely scenario. Mayhap those who ally with the Asians would be spared the fate. What value is there in surviving when all our history and all our struggles will be erased? I cannot conscience such an act. Of course not. That's, and that's to say naught of what Emmett Sec plans for the Exarch's power. Do we stand by and let him threaten our future as well as our past? We need to find him, Flo. And when we do, make your mark. Change the course of history in a way that's felt by those who came before, and those who came after, by everyone we've ever met. Change things so that even my other self, dying somewhere in that future calamity, will smile and say, I knew you would win. Is fighting Emmett Selk the only way? He created an entire city. It will take everything we have to defeat him, if we even can. And if you push that hard in your current state, the light will break free. The decision to press on lies with you, just as it lies with each and every one of us. Red stares quietly into the distance. He seems calm and assured. His easy stance born of confidence rather than false bravado. Brianje glances your way, his expression hesitant. You can see the struggle as he agonizes over the words he wishes to say. Stola meets your gaze with a strained smile. You seem to recall her wearing the self-same expression when speaking with Lise and Runa. Alphano is lost in thought, his eyes downcast. 
There is, however, no sign of the self-doubt which once assailed him at the failing, falling snows. Reen appears to be brooding over her choices, her faintly trembling hands betraying her mounting trepidation. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> You remember that talk we had atop the tower in Mordsuk? I'm still the same man now as I was then. I don't abandon you. You don't abandon me. And together, we make a difference in this fight. There's always hope if we look for it. I saw it again and again as you tore those veils of light from the sky. If we keep taking that next step forward, there's a chance we'll find a way to save you. So no matter how long it takes or how much it hurts, you can count on me to keep on walking. Arthur spoke of the disaster we would bring down upon our heads. Ceaseless conflict. Imagine how he would sneer to see what's become of the first. Not to mention your perilous predicament. And yet who could deny the fire your deeds have ignited in people's hearts? You achieve what my logic and ideals never could. Uniting disparate peoples under the banner of hope and common purpose. Without you, giant Talos would never have raised its head. I have borne witness to such many miracles at your side, and I would do so again. This is but another obstacle in the road. Come, let us travel it. Drag me through yonder in danger. As you wonder, won't do it, as you are wont to do, then I shall endeavour not to slow you down. As thou well knowest, if we are to usher Emmett second to his rest, we must needs bind his Asian soul and then shatter it with overwhelming force. The former task requireth aura sight, and such I have prepared. Upon the exarch's asking no less, though, was ever mine intent to provide said boon. The future whence our noble friend doth hail is a world fallen to Asian artifice, and he would not see such grim history repeated. In a sense, Emmet Sok's destruction will be the culmination of the Exarch's efforts, a reward for all he hath endured during these many years. Yet even as thou stridest into the jaws of peril, forget not but his fondest wish, and that of many others. It is to see thee survive unto the morrow. It is in pursuit of that happiest of outcomes that I do pledge to remain at thy side. time in the first has been a never-ending succession of trials, as arduous as our path in the source ever was. If throughout all our journeys together, through that deep and foreboding wood, you have helped me stay true to my convictions, thus would I return the favour, do as your heart decrees, without hesitation or regret, that is all I will say on the matter. This has put everyone in a solid mood, hasn't it? Honestly, we're not even sure this will be the end of it. I suppose we should speak our minds when we have the opportunity. You taught me that much in armor rank. So forgive me this moment of sentiment, Flo. By dragging me into this sorry mess, you've given me the chance to think and act as I should have, for Reen's sake. Words cannot express how much this has changed my life, or how grateful I am for your support. So I shall express my gratitude through action instead. No matter where you decide to go, I will be there, guarding your back. <sighs> you know what I was just thinking? It was such a good idea not to voice act that s sequence of events in a cutscene. So you could read it, and you could take it in, and go through it. That was a really good idea. Because they could have voice acted that, and you would have just watched it like a cutscene. And you would have got their inflections and stuff. But reading it yourself means a lot more. When Ophelia entrusted me with her power, she warned me that no matter how strong you become, you can still fall victim to despair. You can still feel powerless. But she was right. After you collapsed on Mount Golg, my hands wouldn't stop shaking. If I made a mistake, if I failed to bind the light within you, I was terrified you would die. 
Even now you could be moments from turning and I wouldn't know how to save you. You, Thancred, the others, you've all been there when I needed help. Vinphilia surrendered her life to me. A legacy. I should be ready to do the same for you. And I want to, I do, but I just... I'm not good enough. She told me to follow your example and I've tried, I've really tried. Yeah, then you shouldn't hang your head. You shouldn't? My choice to go. Fate can be cruel, but a smile better suits a hero. We must all keep looking forward like the heroes who never give up hope for this world. I like that one better. It's not a fake smile. We move forward, one foot in front of the other. We march forward. Not sure who you... Actually, never mind. I think the answer might be different for all of us. Nothing will come of brooding here in self-pity. I've made my decision, Flo. I'm going with you. Let's go! <laughs> Thank you, Ossian lover. Zodiac lover! Splitter! Nice house, Emmett. Maybe I could date this guy. Oh, oh. Welcome to the capital. All visitors must present an official writ of permission before admittance will be granted. Your documents appear to be in order. You may proceed into the capital, but any guests you may choose to bring with you must remain in your vicinity at all times. This really is unacceptable. I gave you very specific instructions. Go light ride. Emmett Selk. My invitation was for an abomination, ripe with the power to bring about the world's annihilation. Not this half-broken thing. Whatever am I to do with you? And I see you insist on keeping the same familiar company. Are you so lost without them? It is not she who is lost without the familiar. Not content with remaking an entire city, you aim to fill it with the reconstituted souls of the dead. I may have gotten a little carried away in my attention to detail, added a few unnecessary flourishes. Well, there's no point trying to hide it. Yes. Once the rejoining of worlds is complete, 
Zodiac will regain his full strength and shatter his prison. Then we shall offer up the Source's remaining inhabitants in sacrifice, that we might resurrect our brethren who died to bring Zodiac into existence. But what was it that you came here to do exactly? Ah, <sighs> uh, I mean both, right? <laughs> I'm gonna go with this for story reasons. Well, you can't have him. Oh. The wisdom that man guards may open up new worlds of possibilities. Shit. He has unlocked the secrets of travel across the rift and through time as well, it would seem. Quite an accomplishment for one of his incomplete nature. I must explore the limits of his capabilities and harness that power for the ardor. Even now, after everything, you refuse to see reason. I kind of locked on separate trajectories, it dude. That you were subject to suffering. That your lives will be sacrificed for the ancients. Look at me. I have lived a thousand, thousand of your lives. I have broken bread with you, fought with you, grown ill, grown old, sired children, and yes, welcomed death's sweet embrace. For eons have I measured your worth and found you wanting. Too weak and feeble-minded to serve as stewards of any star! Have your recent spats with Vorthri and his Sin Eaters taught you nothing? Have you not learned that your ignorance and frailty beget only endless misery? How long do you mean to perpetuate this farce? How much more must I endure your bumbling interference? Let us imagine that the laws of reality are again undone and the world faces true annihilation. Do you honestly believe that half your number would sacrifice themselves to save the other? Of course they wouldn't! And if you had witnessed history unfold as I had, you would reach the same conclusion. You cannot be entrusted with our legacy. Man's got a point. I will bring back our brethren, our friends, our loved ones. The world belongs to us, and us alone. I still disagree, but he's got his points. Emmett Selk! We understand, truly, but it makes no difference. The ones you love are in the past, while ours are here in the present. One day, we too will be ashes and dust, but not today. Our time is not yet finished. We share your conviction. 
And that is why we will not abandon our course. You think us the same? You think your tattered soul of equal worth to those I lost? Then come. Earn your place. Prove yourselves worthy to inherit this star. You have a fire, dude. Behold the coming oblivion. It was the end of our era and the beginning of our great work. A fitting backdrop for your final judgment. I shall wait within. But do not spend too much time on your preparations. There's no telling how much longer the guest of honor will last. I hope it's an eight man. I want a Thoradin. Now accessible. Are you really gonna make me choose? <laughs> Just look at this. <laughs> look at this chat. Look at this game chat. Invite? What invite or what? Me pick. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Is it a dungeon or a foreman? Ah, oh, it's a foreman. I'm, s I'm sorry. Obviously, obviously, not everyone gets to come. All right. Okay. Like. <sighs> See it done. Hard, but you're gonna be free soon, pal. I promise you that. 50 subs says you're free soon, brother. Here we go. Here we go. It's already a gamble. I've already got 50 subs on it, man. I've already got the bet going. I've already got the bet running. So we literally get to relive the end of their time. Wow, that's so cool. I'll music 100 after the cutscene. Welcome to the final days of Amor. Check the weather. <laughs> Jesus Christ. They're playing with Aura's mask now? Fuck. Oh, I need to drink it in, lads. The fabric of our star began to fray, and the unchecked energies of creation begat malformed beasts. Alright, 
sky's falling on me. Let's kill some things, man. There's a hype train going. I'm sorry if I've missed any contributions to that, man. I'm so gross right now, but I will get you later. Don't think me ignorant, but... You know how it is. You know how it be. You know how it be. You guys were probably here once. Oh, this guy's gonna blow up on me, isn't he? That big chunker. Does he blow up? What do you do, you big chunker? Chunky boy. Help! One help with chunks. Any chunk help? Am I gonna die here when this thing detonates? Mayhaps. Okay, we're fine, we're fine. I'm not running, I'll take it on the chin like a champ. Oh, please don't give subs, because you might like the stream, literally. I'm asking genuinely, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. We saw what happened earlier, we don't want that now. Uh, don't, don't, don't do that again, don't do that again. You know what could happen, like, let's not do that again. Not now. I missed the stream of begging you, don't give me money right now. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Don't do it, man. I don't want to have to stop. Uh, oh no. Hold, hold. What is next in here? Are they even going to change environments in here like they do? They might keep it the same. Just as prayer gives rise to pride, our dread may manifest our deepest fears. Whoa, look at this guy. Oh, that is gross. Is he like a caterpillar man? The first beast. Any pullers? Jam me, baby! Can this dragon thing get off me? Thank you. Meteor rain. Not moving, not moving. Adjust, everyone else. Everyone else adjust. Black mage, black mage. Woohoo! Black mage power, yeah. Good job, everybody. Oh no, I have to move. <laughs> Cast the spare first, though. Greed. Yes, please. Greed. I was pumping that as well. Oh no, you're gonna kill me again, aren't you? I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I'm gonna die. Man, Sprint needs a shot of cooldown, right, guys? Who's with me? Their petition going or what? I'm 
sick of this anti-black mage content. Oh, it's happening again. Oh, no. I know die this time. I right, good, good player. I want to be in range of the boss, though. Ah! Help! Oh, fuck me. <laughs> Take it on the chin. No. I panicked. Right, can I cast a spell now? Good job soloing the boss of the DPS. Appreciate it. But oh, wait, I can pump. We're pumping. Runes down, commit to the course. I killed that boss. Are we going inside? Oh, they are going to change the environments. Yes. We're not going inside. We're going to go around. We're going to go around. We're going to go around instead. baby. That is beautiful. In a horrifying way, obviously. But... I mean, that goes without saying. I'm not a creep. Who cares about loot? pick the right song for this. Now if you're working on it. I mean it's ideal. It's ideal this track, isn't it? So can we trust? The land buckled. The cities burned. The waters ran red with blood. Hello. Hi. I kind of feel like we're playing Doom now. That's it? I don't think so, guys. I don't think I'm gonna pass. Rip and tear until it is done. What is that? You got like four faces? What would you describe that thing as?
smile face. <laughs> oh, I see. That's beautiful. Shot majestic as always. <laughs> it's nice. It's four smiles in a row. That's all it is. It's four smiles in a row. Beautiful. Oh, are we going to it? I guess it's the last boss of the dungeon. Gobble, gobble, look at you. Hey. I think that lad just wants some gravy, that's all. A little bit of gravy and taters, he'll be all right. Can this thing knock me off the edge? This looks like something that might knock me off the edge. Oh, he's supposed to pull into the middle. Coming, 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 coming. It'll help me, man. Oh, whoa, lots of ads. Okay. Flyer's gonna reach them, is it? No. No, it's not. fall today. No, sir. Most beast bloats and shivers and ruptures. Oh, it's gonna burst! Yo, we need to pump. Pump, 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 pump. Rune go, rune go. Yet this is far from the worst of it. Come, and I will show you. Show me, show me. Just a little further. What? And you will see the end of a world. like was there was a time when I looked upon the Argus skybox and was like that's the best skybox in an MMO I've ever seen not anymore do I walk on this yep uh, is this thing gonna laser shoot us Right? Is it gonna give us the smile laser? Stop 
dying. Trying to get some mana back, baby. Twitch you. Uh, I have a new spell, don't I? Is it Aether Manipulation? Oh, what's the spell that keeps my Enochian up outside of damage? I have that. Sp I should be able to use that spell now, right? It wasn't an Endwalker spell, was it? Umbral Soul, that's the one. If anyone spot it, where is it? Numpad 3. That's that. Okay. I just remembered I had that. I'm not sure when it became active. The star yeah, was a long pain. time ago, I'm sure. We saw he had to weave its laws anew. Oh. oh, you have to be in Umbral Ice to get it. Yeah, I transpose into Umbral Ice. I see. I get you. It's a very cool model. I'm kind of glad that that's not Emmett Selk, though. I would, I don't want to fight him in a dungeon like we, or like you not know, a Xenos one, and then it was like primal Shinryu Xenos. I want Emmett to be a big chunkus. It's fine if not, but I do want that. It would be nice. I assume that's reaching them all. Just to save coolies. Boss next, no doubt. But between us and our goal loomed a final misbegotten fiend. Misbegotten fiend. Smile, please. Cathonic riddle. That's a big boy. See, so we're going to get targeted lasers here. He's got to keep denying us area, right? 
So keep getting moved back. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. I feel like I got lucky. I got out healed. Okay, so they're on a timer, I see. Why is that one so sparkly? Ah, I'm in it! Haha, <laughs> <laughs> shit me! <laughs> I thought I was safe, everyone ran to me! You guys all ran to where I was stood, what the hell? Run away, run away, run away! And now we go to the sides, right? Okay, okay, okay. You guys are freaking me out, man! <laughs> You're like super freaking me out! Holy fuck! I'm going rune on the next one. I'm going to pump on the next one. Cooldowns are ready. Beautiful. Right, which ones are first? That one. Commit! I will not be moved, boss! Don't you target this at me. Good shit, boss. Good shit. Boss! That was an awesome boss. That was so fucking cool. What happens now? Where's Emmett? Does he let us through? Does he let it through? This is it. First and final end. The unwinding of life itself. Okay. 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 Nevertheless. Your performance was underwhelming, and I remain unconvinced of your worthiness. Oh, oh, by defeating him, do I prove my worthiness? Oh, that's got to be a twist. But should I bring my full strength to bear? Well, 
you would be as leaves in the wind. The gulf yeah, between us is a reflection of the disparity between the world as it was and what it has become. may not live up to your lofty standards. But they are our worlds, our homes, full of life and love and hope. And we won't stand by and let you destroy them. Oh, die. Do not fucking die. No, 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 no. Oh, you fucking dare. Salad boy. Oh, you fucking dare, salad boy. I mean, none of that. You are a mistake. For we who have known perfection, the shattered source and these shards are ghastly mockeries of the true world. The ephemeral lives you exalt are pale imitations, utterly devoid of meaning. Yeah, but we stand here though, don't we? Belittle us all you like, but we will rise again and again and give the lie to your insults through word and deed. We define our worth, not the circumstances of our creation. <laughs> More prattle. I'm not fine. I'm fine. Fool. Who are you? No one. Nothing. Once I have reclaimed my heritage, my first act will be to expunge your stain from history's weave. Still fighting the good fight. I'm about to build boom. All right, stocks rising, stocks rising. Oh, ho, ho, that's the shit ish. It is true that all we hold dear is fated to fade away, but that is no reason for us to forsake it. To take what steps we may and thus mark the road for those who would follow. To strive for the best of all futures. Be this not also thy purpose? Fine. Fine. Do not presume to speak of my future. And you, why waste your final moments in futile defiance? Weary wanderer, you've no fight left to fight, no life left to live. Hard bet time? Come on. You see, the light will not be denied. Surrender to your fate and let the transformation take you. Rise up in madness and fury. 
devour the vermin infesting the land which is rightfully ours! I forgot about him. Now, Reed! Now! <laughs> I'm not in a bad way, not in a bad way. I just forgot he was still here. He hadn't done anything for ages. Not again. Not again. Fight it. You have to hold on. If you had the strength to take another step, could you do it? Could you save our worlds? Yeah, the load, baby. This world is not yours to end. This is our future. Our story. Michael Sarah Become instant. Champions from beyond the rift, heed my call! people very well let us proceed to your final judgment the victor shall write the tale and the vanquished become its villain but come let us cast aside titles and pretense and reveal our true faces to one another. I am Hades. 
He who shall awaken our brethren from their dark slumber. And I am the warrior of lights. Let's go! The dying gasp. Is this the duty finder? All right, hold on, hold on. Summon your champions. Summon the champions. Summon the champions. Yeah, that's, that's everybody. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Bappies. How can we not bring Bappies? How can we not bring Bappies to the finale? Get in here, son. Say when you're ready. At some point, I must have dribbled on my keyboard during that cutscene. I've like typed all these letters and shit. We're good. We're ready for war. Full speed ahead. song going? Cookies for babbies. Egg check. No, wait. I've got to go fancy. I've got to eat some Zephyr. Hold on, hold on. Don't pull yet. Oh, we fight in the forgotten wasteland of the Asians. Suitable. Suitable. Whenever you're ready, team. Whenever you're ready. I'm ready. I'm. So, I don't know. <laughs> it's been an emotional day, man. It's been a very emotional day. <sighs> I'm just glad we stopped the stream yesterday. If I would have started this, I would have had to abandon my family and everything. Can we stand in these? There's like enough for each of us. Oh. Checking. Am I dead? Am I dead? Okay, shouldn't have done that. Okay. I don't get this mechanic. It's confusing. He's got to turn into something else. Look at his health bar. It's well too small. Scurry and scatter. Oh, 
Something horrible is coming. Something horrible. Brother, come with the hot waves. Try to sacrifice all the Asians to gain power. I am stifled by this vessel of flesh. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. All the souls of the sacrificed. The future of the stars are shaped by my hands. I shall be raised up by the prayers of our fallen brethren. Behold, a sorcerer of hell. Big wings. Tight on a match. Shadow stream. Going for one of the wings? Yep. Ow! <laughs> Is that from the face? Okay, you're all going over here. I believe, I believe. You guys wouldn't leave me astray, right? Nah, you, you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't. Is it gonna slam the sides now? Is that what it is? Okay. I trust in the team. I trust in the team. I got off the lost. We've got on the other side of his wing here. Yep. Oh, I got hit. Don't die on this fight, Mike. Come on. Just don't get hit by anything else. I'm with GG, dude. Oh, I thought that's going to be tank shit, isn't it? Are we drawing lines here? 
This place will be your tomb. Oh, fuck. What is this? Donuts? Stand in the donuts? Me, boss. My golden breath. Dream now of a dark tomorrow. Glad I'll gather my muscle claims to vain reflections. It's alright. It's alright. In Zodiac's name, I beseech you. Light within her champions grows faint. This on extreme is gonna be nuts. You, you have no power over me. I'm so excited to see what his reaction is to being beaten, because that confirms who we are. Coupo, baby, Coupo. We did it, team. We unleashed the light with inside us. Good job, everybody. Oh, <laughs> hard bird's tired. Oh, man. Hard bird's tired. Okay. Let's see where this goes. Thumbs up. Uh, here we go. Suck of your shit, dude. Such infernal strength for Moon Breeder.
That's a lovely touch. That's amazing. Oh, I'm not feeling sad. This is just awesome. Remember. Remember us. Remember that we once lived. Nodders, mate. Nodders. It's over. Emmett Selk is no more. You okay? More importantly, how do you fare? What dost thou see? Her ether. It is... It is as it used to be. As a disciple of Zodiac, the Asian was the darkness to your light. I can but assume that when you set your strength against his, the light within you was spent. No, it's more than that. Under the strain of that incredible flood of ether, your soul had begun to break apart. Yet now it seems somehow restored. I tried to help you before the battle, but Emmett Selk stopped me. So, how did you... exactly what did you... Can you tell us what happened? It's all good. Ardbet lives on inside us now. He's awake, though. Bath, bro. Where to start? I believe I owe you all an apology, and you, most especially. Another time, but it's fine. It is good to see you awake. I felt bad locking him in that tower. <laughs> I remember all those weeks and weeks ago. Oh, dude, don't do that. <laughs> well, 
It is good to be awake. Dove straight into the ocean over there, did they? Uh, all I could see from here was the whale, Master Chai. Twas surely Alfno and those friends of his. They did something heroic, mark my words. You need only look up there for proof of that. Shut up. As you say, my love. They're sure to be back. Any moment now. Any moment. Are we riding home? Is it time? They are coming back, aren't they? <laughs> Bad sort of... That's not fair. Don't make Julia cry. Fuck that. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> there, there, dear. Everything will be all right. Not mommy. There, there, look, over there, over the beach. Greetings! You all right? Welcome back! Where's everyone else? Rianji can't even swim. Come on, help! I didn't think we'd be swimming. The whole way back. Heavens. Heavens. Take me. Alpha no. Oh, hells. <laughs> Where's Ariadne? He can't swim. If he comes flying in on Bismarck or something. Wait. Where's Ariadne? Right? Did we put a rope on him or something? <sighs> he must have fallen behind. But shouldn't we look for him? He'll wash up sooner or later. And friends are you lot? What? What do you mean? Alpha no. <laughs> Welcome back, dear ones. You'll wash up. <sighs> and thus did salvation come to the first. The lamps of Amarot will fade along with Emmet Selk's enchantments, and the depths shall be as once they were. <sighs> Mount Gulg will one day fall, and the Talos below yield to wind and rain. This tale, too, will fade with time, passing into legend as the world heals and moves on. Nevertheless, I 
riding home? There he is, all washed up. As ether obeys the cycle, as death and decay gives way to new life. I can only hope the Empire hasn't killed their bodies, right? That's our hope right now. <laughs> so too do the memories we share inspire others to rise to greatness. For we who walk before may lead those who walk after. Your road goes ever on, as does your story, as does your legacy. Such is the hero's lot, to touch the lives of countless others. Just too happy. We're going to go Excuse back me? and they're in Empire, You're Emperor the Prison. You're the warrior aren't you? <laughs> sure. Where are you from, really? And how did you get to be so strong? Kind of rude. Wow. <sighs> I can't even process everything that just happened. <laughs> that was a lot. <laughs> that was a lot, man. That was so much that happened there. Okay. <laughs> I don't even know where do you, where do you even start? Like that was incredible. Just incredible. The whole thing was just incredible. It was worth all the vagary and all the, the stuff earlier was worth it just to get to that. That was so worth it. I can't wait till the patch content, man. I can't. I've actually got my headphones up backwards at this point. <laughs> Tier list. Let's just say Rian J stocks and Isha are up. Let's just say that, shall we? Why don't we put it that way? Oh my god. Fury Robin, thank you so much. Oh my god, the salad. Uh, we did? We hit 10,000 subs? Emma. Oh my god. Jesus Christ. Oh wow. The team, the team sorry as well they've been rejoicing oh my god i even noticed oh thank you i can't thank you enough thank you so much sub for scotland ah, i cried twice today i couldn't explain it to you if i tried <laughs> i couldn't explain it to you if i tried i really couldn't i really couldn't It'd take me about 200 hours to get you there. It 
it would. It would take that long. This the web for the two years. Thank you. Thank you all. Wow, what a ride. Oh, Heaven's Ward just got crapped on, man. Hey, that's the best video game story I've ever done. Like, they, I can't explain it to you why these are better than movies and books, because you get to make choices and things, right? They actually affect the album. But they did some things in this story, Emma, where they played the medium perfectly. Like, for example, they voice act certain cutscenes, right? So you can kind of get this game idea. It's like, it's an important cutscene, and therefore they get the voice actors into voicing. But then if it's not, it's kind of meandering and stuff, then they have the voice. But there was a bit before where any ordinary story game studio would have voice acted this bit because you had to individually speak to the main characters and get their feelings on what we should do next because it was it was like the in, in terms of the story you could die that's the thing it's like we'll, we'll follow you where we go but they decided not to voice act it you can't do that in a movie you can't do that in a book and they made you individually go through each one and read it and take it in instead of being like oh let's put our inflection on it let's you know this is how this story is told it's them saying you put your own twist on this that kind of detail is what drew you in massively like that is that's using the medium properly like something's like oh let's make it like a movie or let's make it like a book and you have to read the whole thing but using it properly is knowing when each bit needs to fit together and they played that super well they played that extraordinarily well like throughout the entire ending like throughout the whole thing. Yeah, I've not even finished. <laughs> not even finished. There's absolutely another one. There is more to come yet. There is absolutely more to come. Uh, it's not about the amount of voice acting. It's the intentional choice not to voice act it. It's the intentional choice to say, no, not this part. You need to read this. You need to read this. And if you're a skipper, you won't get the experience that I had. That's okay. But they intentionally went, we could obviously do that. We could do our own telling of the story like a movie, but not at this moment. This moment needs to be done by the player. Otherwise, it won't have the same impact. It just won't work as well. Like, that's that's why it's so good. That's, that's using the medium properly. And I just, that was amazing the whole way through. <sighs> Incredible. Yeah, it was such good storytelling. Such good storytelling. Really well done. And then the ending, but the ending has to be done properly. I loved going through the city um, as as Almoret fell and replaying through that with him still expressing his point of view. I think overall, the big thing is, this is how you do morally gray storytelling because everybody was in the right in their own perspective. The Asians were in the right just as we were in the right for why we wanted to survive and i imagine given that ch the same choice everybody in the stream would probably have a slightly different point of view about what should have happened there should the world have been left to those who were born into the new world or should the world have been gone back to those who sacrificed their lives in order to create that world what if you lost family, you know, and all that kind of stuff? What if your father or your mother or whatever was one of the half of the population that had to kill themselves in order to save the planet? Do they deserve to come back? Probably in your eyes as a child, as a child, right? Probably in your eyes. But then again, what if your new family is born of the world that came after? Do they deserve to now die to bring back them old ones? <clears throat> I still side, personally, I side on Team Heidelin. I'm on Team Heidelin. They gave up their lives knowingly to save the world for the future generations. But that's that's my take. That's how I would have gone with it. I would have definitely stood with the... Thankfully, otherwise I might have been quite a, a miser going into Endwalker and the post-MSQ. Is if I would have not... If I would have had different opinion, I may have been stood on the side against the Scions. Like, I might have been on the Asian side and been like, well... You know, maybe I would have had different thoughts about that. <laughs> maybe I told talk, talk to them all. That's a good idea. Let's see what they have to say. The ending to this tale have been a joyous one indeed. Myriad were the lessons learned, and yet there is one of particular import. It's imperative that I master magics to grant my feet purchase upon the water, or else allow me to part the sea at will. <laughs> I must needs visit Bismarck in due course and scrub his teeth in thanks. Mayhap the airy arts of a fairy whale will might be imparted to mortal men. We shall see. 
we shall see. That's a good idea, Rianji. I'll teach you how to swim. People came from arms around to join the festivities, but most seem to have stumbled home by now. Even so, I dare say Norvrant will echo to the sound of clinking mugs for some while yet. I thought to indulge in a little revelry myself last night, until Rianji began to list all the names of my drunken conquests. I ended up drinking water. Water. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine boosting. That's fine too. Not everybody will get what I, mean, I can only speak for myself, but not everybody will get from that story what I got from it. There are, there's no way I'm probably the only person here who feels about Rapture and the Bioshock universe the way I do. <laughs> Nups knew it. <laughs> Nups knew it. But to walk into Rapture leading to the end of this, there's no one who's going to have that on top of the story as well, right? You know? To walk into that scenery and be like, oh, come on, man. <laughs> come on, really? This is where it takes place? <laughs> uh, it does not, Chris. No. Thank you. Oh, Flo, are you well? No ill after effects. To my eyes, you seem completely healed. It really is a miracle. Speaking of happy surprises, I was amazed to see the crowd that greeted our return. I hadn't realized just how many people we'd met along the way. And did you see their smiles? Right then and there, I vowed to do whatever I could to keep that joy from fading. Uh, I think you're coming home with us, Reen. <sighs> I knew the night's blessed were among the revelers, I. The Crystarium was so crowded I thought it's safe to speak my true name. For Runar and his ilk- Oh, they told them! Oh! <laughs> Wait a minute! Who are you? <laughs> As you may recall, customary not to reveal one's true name outside of family and ceremony. Yet when I hurried to explain that all present were like family, I was greeted with an outpouring of tears. An emotional people, the blessed. That's good. <sighs> it seemed I don't know my own limits. I had thought to push on till dawn, but my body had other plans. Still, I did enjoy the carousing while it lasted. Even I need to forget my cares every now and then. What I didn't need is to wake up to Alphano smirking at my bedside. He said my face was a rare sight while I slept. But I hope I wasn't drooling. You should be thankful he wasn't drawing you. He's watching you while you sleep. I'm not kidding. He's your brother now, but keep a fucking eye on that one. All right? Keep a fucking eye on that one. Yeah? Get separate rooms. That's all I'm saying. He's a peeper. He's not going to do anything weird besides draw you, probably. It would seem that the city celebrated long into the night. Not that I would know. As embarrassing it is to admit, I woke to find myself in the infirmary, having apparently collapsed from exhaustion. My aching pride was somewhat soothed by the sight of Alizé sleeping in the bed next to mine. She must have been just as weary. Long has it been since I've seen her face so peaceful in repose. Ah, it was a rare, tranquil morning, made unforgettable by the sight of those clear blue skies. <sighs> Shall we talk to the boss? Shall we? I think it's time. Are we going home? Are we going home? By your deeds has the blinding light been banished from these skies, and the Sin Eaters driven to retreat. Although our many hurts will be years in the mending, I have faith that this world and her people will one day be whole once more. With no rejoining in prospect, the source need no longer fear the coming of an eighth umbral calamity. Something horrible is about to happen. It's all too happy. And with that triumph, the future from which you came will no longer come to pass. Yet here you still stand. So I do. I wonder if that other age continues onward somehow, cut adrift from time's flow. Or have I simply etched myself a place upon this new block of history? Either way, this is an unexpected development. As the summoner of your souls, my death was meant to release you back to your world. Oh. Oh, get the knife. Yet I, I am hold him much down. alive, and you are still stuck here in the first. Look, what's got to be done's got to be done, all right? 
Turn around, Alfie. I believe I speak for us all when I say that we are happy to postpone our return if it means your life is spared. We will seek out another way. Besides, I never had any intention of rushing home. Uh, there are people here I still need to thank, and this means I might actually have time to do so. Oh god, you're gonna get kidnapped by the Empire. Oh no. Oh, go back now. You Yet should go and check on things, right? Our comrades in the source. Yeah, good good call, RJ. To Taru, to name but one, will no, be not her, but other people. How things stand with us. You should go back, it's been a while. So, you'll just have to make the journey alone for the moment. <laughs> Be sure and give a full report to our fellow scions, would you? Oh, oh we're just ditching the scions. Any news you can bring us from back home. Oh, this is interesting. Then I see no reason to delay. I can open the path from here. I imagine we each have matters demanding our attention, so let this be a farewell for us all. We're Send benching the, all the scions? Oh, and do try to ensure she arrives within the city next time. <laughs> Obviously, of besides I two. I for utmost accuracy. I think no we need a trial emote. Or unplanned passengers, I promise. It makes sense. It's been a very scion-focused MSQ. And the post-MSQ is going to involve the uh, Batman and Jeff. Hey, I tell you what, I bet the Emperor's chuffed that Grandpappy's dead. Oh, one Assian down. Nice. I'm a little relieved, to be honest. I would have been terribly lonely if everyone had suddenly disappeared. You're not coming? But I understand that you have to go. Safe journey, warrior of darkness. I hope to see you again soon. Yeah, she's native. Can't we use... Magic. And fix that. Just a moment while I attune the portal. Then you can be on your way. Surely the trolley can bless her. By the light of his mighty beard, should she not pass? When I was a boy, many long years ago, I yearned to stand tall as the heroes of Eld. But like a fool seeking to pluck the stars from the heavens, my every attempt to reprise their deeds fell short. And then, one day, an all but forgotten dream from my youth stood before me in the flesh. <laughs> it's nice that they paid him off after sealing him away in a tower all those years ago. It is nice. I wonder if there was a lot of fan speculation of like, what happened with him? When's he going to come back? A hero who looked at the horizon and beyond and saw I knew not what. All I knew was that I would give anything to stand at that hero's side. It was everywhere. I bet it was. Uh, I mean, even I was asking. It was like, I got, there's something got to happen with him. Would that it was so easy. Can't go home. The glory of the heavens was ever beyond the grasp of those who never thought to reach for it. But if I have gained anything from all of this, it is the courage to stretch out my hand. Do you hear me, Grahatia? This is no time for sleeping. Meanwhile...
<laughs> to the west gate. I want to know what's happening there. Same as the others, struck down with a single blow. An unfortunate day to draw guard duty. Why are you order? Forgive me. These were your people. We took advantage of this slaughter to slip into the palace. It is not for me to grieve them. Oh, dude. Fucking cold. That was the Emperor. What? Wait! Oh. Uh. Your radiance! Gaius, you've missed your part in this, I'm afraid. Set up. Identify yourself, demon. You were hoping for the Asian. The Craven shed this skin and fled, rather than face me. A pity. I was looking forward to crossing blades with myself. But I cannot deny the feeling of satisfaction. Body and soul reunited at last. I'm sure I believe that. What now? The game continues, but the pieces have changed. Only if we trust in a paragon's words. A mistake I do not intend to repeat. Uh... He speaks the truth. Elidibus is gone. Tore a hole into the rift. Xenos, my foolish, greedy son. This wasn't greedy. Was a second life not enough? Was the Empire too rich a prize to ignore? True freedom for our nation, our people, will never be won by a spoiled princeling. The burden of this throne is beyond you. Hmm. Tis you, father, who have struggled with this burden. Simply holding the Empire together has occupied your limited faculties. But you may take comfort in knowing that I have no intention of pursuing your tedious agenda. Nor am I interested in ruling over the Empire's lands. It's more like it. I came only to remove that which ruins my sport. I will not have my prey That's stolen the right by your petty there it wars is. and cowardly weapons. There it is. That's the guy I remember. I fucking asked about ruling. Couldn't give a shit. You would kill me just for that. Fucking right, you would. <laughs> you would torture civilizations for that, brother. I need no other reason. Any and all who interfere with my And has tortured civilizations hands. for that. Will not do so twice.
Dinos is like the ultimate COD kid, man. He'll do whatever for a rematch. I heard the Asians speak of Zodiac, an idolin. Even the will of this star is but a construct of our own making. We shall gorge upon their strength, and then, my friend, our contest shall begin anew. Xenos! <laughs> yeah. What, really? Oh, get lost, Shadowbringers! Like, honestly! Get back to this again! You're really doing this again! Really? We're doing this again! We just had the wrap up, like, well. <laughs> How long did you guys have to wait for the first patch? I'm not playing Endwalker till the whole fucking game's out, man. <laughs> Three months. <laughs> Endwalker is not like this. What, Endwalker's not gonna have patches? It's not gonna be like a 6-1, 6-2, 6-3? Okay, that's interesting. All right, that's interesting. <clears throat> Endwalker's story is done. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, my mind's barely. Right, I need two minutes. <laughs> my mind's frazzled. Absolutely frazzled. You've sent me a picture. Oh, does it come out well? How's, how's the paint? Fine. Oh, good. Excellent. Okay. That's awesome. That's awesome. No spoilers. I'm frazzled, man. My hair's falling out again. I'm going bald again. <sighs> There's nearly 11,000 subs. I can't process. How many are you on? 10,774. It's just an unfathomable number. I can't even process it. I really can't. I'm fucked. I'm fucked. I need to go to bed. All right. Give me two minutes, team. Where's my dog? I need some normality. My dog. Hello. <laughs> go for a little walk. I'm going to take Ben out for two minutes, guys, and try and sort my brain out a bit. Come here, buddy. Yeah. I genuinely can't process it. Hello. I know. I don't know what he's been doing. Hello, hello, hello. 210 subs to go till what? What is it until? I thought I'd lost an earring then. Oh, 11k. Right, 11k before he comes back. Go. I think he'll probably be... I reckon he'll be about six minutes. We've got six minutes, yeah? This is what we're going for. Sub for Scotland. I can speak Scottish until he comes back. You can sub if you want it. You can sub if you don't want it. Okay? <laughs> sub for Scotland. Oh, God, it's happening. <laughs> it's, it's like, do it, do it. <laughs> I actually could be Scottish. I'm yeah, joking. I can't see up there if it's, gonna, if it's doing it or not, but I can see subs coming in. When he gets back, I'll be like, it's, it's um, 11,000 subs. 
Is that right? 11,000. That's insane. Gifted 25 subs. I can't even keep up with it now. I would like to try and keep up with it. Uh, I could try and get back, but it's not going to happen. Michael be like, what? Oh, no, the screen's stopping up there. Oh, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, don't crash the stream. Crash the stream. I'm trying to work it out. <gasps> 10,900, I can see it. Oh, no, I can see the subs coming in. Remember, you're subbing for Scotland. Ah, uh, you're not subbing for Preach Gaming anymore. You're subbing for Scotland. Ah, uh, yeah. Mike's gone out to eat a sausage roll. He loves a sausage roll. <laughs> Holy cow. It's happening. A Scottish sausage roll. This is great. Scotland. Are we done it? Have we done it? I can't see. I can't actually see. I, I can't even see it, Captain. Right. Where are we? Oh, have we done it? Oh, isn't I? Oh, wait a minute. There's a finger. Oh, my God. Fucking hell. Oh, fucking hell. We're on 11,337. Are we going to get to 12,000 subs in the next four minutes? I didn't think so. But bloody hell. That's fucking incredible. I can't believe it. I just can't believe it. I, I'll play this game for 12k subs. Don't you worry about it. We'll get... S oh, oh, I don't know what happened to my accent. I suddenly left Scotland and went somewhere else. Fucking hell. Do you like that? I think we're on 11,383 subscribers. And I'd like to say... I can see the water camp in Mr. Dempsey. Do you know what? I actually could play a game. Like, I would like to play a game where there's loads of different accents. Oh, fucking hell. Oh, no. I is back. 420. Quick, go. Go. No, don't look. I don't look. Oh, fucking hell. You ruined it. What you, did you do? You fucking ruined it. What did you do? Oh, bloody oh, hell. You've written the number on I we've I we've written the number on Mike. That's what we've done. We've written it on. That isn't real. I don't know if it's real or not. Fucking hell. I don't know. I did. I baited you. I totally did it. You did it for Scotland. Subs for Scotland. Now you can afford a haggis. Mike eats haggis. Right, I don't know how many subs you're actually on. Oh yeah, there Mike, we go. It's fucking real. <laughs> it's fucking real. What did you do? It is real. Oh, they're subbing for Scotland. What do you want me to do? This is why what we did need... What you do? What did I do? You didn't get your do? boobs out or something, did you? Fucking hell, I'd have to refund them. No, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> the subbing for Scotland, the chat's telling you. This, this is what happens. She seduced us. I did. Oh my God. I seduced you. Let me in. Please. Right, I'm going to have to go. Not before it gets to 12. Oh, shut up. Get out. Right, okay, I'm going. <laughs> Where the Scots? What did you, what did you do? I don't even <laughs> I'm a streamer lost for words you've killed me <sighs> thank you everybody for Scotland Jesus Christ <sighs> I need some normality in my life <laughs> I need some normality Scotland, bro. My hands are shaking. <sighs> you were tempered by Titania. How <laughs> did she temper everybody? Thank you, everybody. Again. Let's sit on my couch. This is what I want to do. I want to sit on my couch. 
Well, it's all nice and quiet. <sighs> Lady Maria. I want to sit on my couch and relax. Oh. Oh, I'm absolutely lost for words. I'm absolutely lost for words. I've got to turn the question in a minute. I just need to calm down a minute, all right? It's, I fucking cried twice today. I've got shaky hands. I've got a Scottish red-haired wife. I mean, no other way. Well, cleaner would be nice. <laughs> Imagine what you'd be like if you had a bath. Potty. Don't you full face at me. <laughs> <laughs> Pray return to the rising stones. <laughs> I'm gonna go see Tataru. I am, man. I'm going. I am gonna go see Tataru. I'm going. I'm going. But well, we need to spread this out a bit, don't we? Right, this is what I've been doing. This is what Emma's been doing. I need to get my drill out, don't I, today? It's getting closer. We need to spread this out a bit. Oh, you got all the teddies out. <laughs> there you go, Woden. I don't know if you're still here, but if you are here, if you are here, we got the drug dealer couch. It's a, it's a mock up of where it's gonna what it's gonna be like. Oh, it looks like the paint came out all right, actually. Hey, I did a good job. I did a good job, don't you think, guys? Wait, we both did it. Uh, did so, not see you there with a brush yesterday. That, I need to go down with, um, it's where the tape was, so I just need oh, to go okay. down with a skinny brush. Yeah, okay, that's fine. That's fine. You can see Bex's sheep popping out from the other side. <laughs> Bex's sheep just showing its face. Just peeking out. We will be streaming from here in the next couple of weeks. No, a couple more weeks, guys, and we will be in. Get Chris in here on Monday. I have to change all the addresses on Amazon's are here now. Why orange? Because it's going to look really cozy. There's going to be like, this wall's got a lot. There's a lot more to do. It's not going to look like this. This is like a, this is everything that's in the room right now. It's going to, this couch was free. Can you tell? But it's got a seasoning to it. It's got, it's got some love and life in it. It, it was free. Look. <laughs> I was saying, when we started decorating the office, yeah. didn't exactly have over 11,000 Twitch subscribers, okay? <laughs> right? So. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to gotta bear that in mind. Oh, is this your office? Oh, Emma's office is quite nice and tidy. Yeah, Emma's office is quite nice and tidy. Emma's desk. Brand new chairs from GT Omega. All good. We won't be using a green screen going forward. I've been trying to get away from the green screen for stream for quite some time, because there's more fun we can have in the back. Thanks to the Final Fantasy team in Los Angeles, we will have a fat cat uh Beanbag thing, I guess is what it is. That will be coming. I'm not sure where we're going to put it. <clears throat> I have no idea where that's going to go, but we will. Yes, they sold out, but the, the Final Fantasy team has been able to source one for us. Because I refuse to get one. I refuse to get one, but the Final Fantasy team has sorted it out because they've been watching the stream. Oh, what's this? Why have you put raspberries on it? That's oh, it's our kitchen. Oh, before and oh, I mean, it wasn't blurry before. It was no, what a piss take! It wasn't blurry <laughs> before you went in there. What kind of joke ass before and after is this? It was blurry first, and now it looks like this. That this is Chris's one request for our new office is a toasty maker. <laughs> he he definitely wanted a sandwich maker, so I've uh, I've been a generous boss and bought a, a toasty maker. Only eleven thousand five hundred and thirty, by the way. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you. Should we go and see Tataru? Are we? Should we go and see Tataru? Should we go and see Tataru? That's okay, RJ. Calm down. Oh god, the full Joker? The Joaquin Phoenix Joker? Oh god. <laughs> to the Rising Stones, friends. Let's go. Let's go. 
Coffee Kyle's here. It's too many names. It's absolutely insane. And I feel like an asshole because I can't thank you all. But believe me, from the bottom of my heart, I do thank you. Whoa. <laughs> you fucking idiots. <laughs> I like to go in there, I guess. I like to go in here. Look at these guys, Em. I have to go inside. I have to go inside and see you. Yeah. They're guiding me where I need to go. That way. That way. I go this way. I go this way. I go this way. I go. Play that music for me. Why is it protected by death? Why are the, the guard, why are you dressed as death for the guards? <sighs> Peace and quiet. I think I should settle in the in the here for the rest of time. <laughs> she didn't recognize me. But, but, but. Oh, is it really you? Ahoy! No! When? We didn't think you'd be back for ages. I moves in mysterious ways. Right, so it does, eh? <laughs> The reports you had delivered by the excitable little pixie said as much. As for the situation on this side, Imperials are still eyeing our forces from afar. They're keeping a watch room from the door when I take a fag break. From what I'm told, the Garlean armies have been slow to react and seem reluctant to commit any large scale engagements. It's an odd sort of stalemate, you know? Otherwise, we've yet to see any sign of that awful Black Rose weapon we were warned about. Why did she close the door? Just close the door. All right. <laughs> oh, well, I suppose we did call in an old friend to help out on that count. Did you notice, me? It was the best thing I've ever done in this game. <laughs> Kryle and I had a terrible time tracking him down, though. We had to stop for a pint in the pub, and then we spotted him. Though it was worth to see the look on your face when you find out who it is. Anyway, just about to make contact with this helper of ours. They confirm the latest news from front. Might you fancy having a pint while I do? Ah, the warrior of light back surely belongs. Just if nothing had happened. But you do seem different somehow. You'll have to tell me all about your adventures when we next have a spare moment. But for now, barman, two pints of John Smith's over here. Oh, you get a wind up gratia. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> that's cool. A little wind up gratia. Oh, Jesus. Elidibus. Oblivion has claimed him. Emmet Selk gone, lowbred gone. I alone remain, the last of the unbroken. Once more, I am moved to reevaluate the potential of these tattered souls. Ah, Xenos. Never did I dream you could overpower me so completely. Possessed as I was of your body and all its uncanny strength. 
And now that I have shared with you the truth of this world and its reflections, who can predict how events will unfold? Not I. Emissary. What a poor jest that title has become. The flow of history has become muddied. Its currents wild beyond my capacity to direct them. You have wrestled the advantage, Heidelin. The thieving hands of your disciples tighten their grip on our star. The origins of the world remain hidden and its inhabitants ignorant of their broken existence. Just as you and your creators desired. They celebrate the gift of imperfect life. Uncaring, unknowing as we weaken and fade. But do not imagine yourself rid of us. Oh, your champion has indeed proven the most egregious obstacle to our ascendance. Barbed thorn in my side. She may yet be removed and cast into the abyss. Oh, yes. It can be done. I will keep these heroes mired in the first. Victory will be ours at last. Warriors of darkness now, are they? Then their fate is decided. They shall meet the same end as those who came before. Death at the hands of the Warriors of Light. Uh, what? <laughs> what? What? What does that mean? Cassians always have a plan. Seems you were right. Yes, there is something out there. But it would mean crossing marms and marms of this infernal emptiness. It's rather unhealthy for living creatures as I understand it. Even were we to restrict ourselves to brief forays, I don't like to imagine the effect it would have on our ether. But you still want to go, don't you? We may have saved the world. We haven't reclaimed it. <sighs> when you put it that way, choice do we have? Well, of course I'm going with you. That's what family's for, isn't it? Come, let's head back and prepare for this mad journey of yours. Thank you, Thancred. There's something out there. I assume the light wall is still there. Oh, okay. Okay. The big belt buckle. That was like wings. Though blazing skies give way to gentle night, what hand can end the war of dark and light? You have completed the main scenario quest, Shadowbringers. Uh, bolstered by your experience in the first, you are now able to accept new quests from job-related NPCs in the source. In order to access them, the following conditions must be met. 
Reach level 80 in a given job. Complete the relevant level 70 job quest. Complete the associated role quest line. Quest locations or details can be reviewed in level 70 job quest journal entry. In addition, quests to unlock new content have now become available in the Crystarium. Rest well, warrior of light and darkness. The two worlds of adventure await your return. I see. Oh, it's a black mage quest? No way. In Ulda? In Ulda? Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. I see you, free company. I see you. I see you. Uh, shit. Where was it? Where's the rising stones? There we go. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I don't know what was going on. Nothing? Wrong instance. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> How do I change it? You can swap. Travel to instanced area. Which one? I, okay, I guess this one. <laughs> I'm guessing this one. Hey everybody, it's a party! <laughs> it's a party! Okay, there we go. In priest of the lair. <laughs> Alright, there was a party going on. There was a party and I almost missed it. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, I know, right? We missed it. Is this the the end to uh the end to uh Shadowbringers? The end of 5.0. It's been a pleasure. It's been an absolute pleasure. It has. <laughs> Goodbye, 5.0. Goodbye. I have the ultimate question, yes or no? Is the post MSQ as good? I mean, that's a hard quest, to, quest line to beat, right? That's a hard quest line to beat. But yes, it's better. I mean, shut up, man. Shut up. It's better. Oh, God, shut up. Uh... <laughs> better. Even better. It's good and better. And worse. <laughs> it's good, better, and worse. Okay. Ah, my face hurts. Alright, I'm going to all that. I'm going. I'm going to all that. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. <sighs> to all that. Crap. Uh, what's the place called again? Uh, it's called... Weaver's Guild? I think. We just go to Thaumaturges.
Yeah, I think we go to the miners one, don't we? Because they're stood outside there. Oh, they're still here. They're still here. Good team. I think they, those were the game changer for me in FF14. That They were what changed my mind. They, those were what, like, put all my expectations to rest. <laughs> they were the ones that put all my expectations to rest. Uh, it's a yellow quest. Let's have a look. So you want to be a weaver. You want to be a miner. Uh... Am I blind? Yellow quest? That was it. Oh, the tome one. Level 80, a home for a tome. Yeah, okay, so it was at the normal place. That's fine. La lie! Home for its own. Lala, Lala is eager to hear tell of your recent adventures. I didn't think there was anything related to the jobs in Shadowbringers. Good to see you again. Welcome back to the halls, floor of the black. It says the dark powers in you are ever burgeoning. Pray tell, where have your travels taken you since last we met? Uh, yeah. A world flooded with light. Oh, a journey to another world, you say. Intriguing, indeed. Consider me impressed and even a bit envious. How are you able to peer into the past of the Archmage Nalbert and form a bond across the ages with his young friend Tainer? While the circumstances are not entirely the same, I cannot help think back to my own encounter with the great Shatoto. Shatoto, we trust. Speaking of which, I too have been keeping myself occupied. I have recorded every detail we learned in our last adventure in writing, that we might preserve Shitoto's knowledge for posterity and avert any similar calamity that may threaten future generations. Just the other day, I put the finishing touches to the final chapter of the final volume, concluding with Shitoto's departure. There is, however, one lingering... <clears throat> well, fancy that. I come to check up on the lie here, and who do I find but our old friend Floor? <laughs> Yes, it's him. It's him. What up, player? Well, if it isn't everyone's favorite button-headed hero. I need neither your support nor your sympathy. But I suppose you have never been one to let that stop you. Come now, Lalai. You yourself mentioned that you were at a loss for what to do with the records you had scribed, yes? I simply hope to inquire as to whether there have been any fruitful developments on that front. He loves her, though. And she really hates him. <laughs> hmm. Do you mean to rub salt in my wounds, yes? There have been no developments, fruitful or otherwise. I consulted with my brothers and sisters at the Order of Nal Thal, but to the last man they refused to en even entertain the thought. <laughs> you consulted with- do you mean to say that you're still a member of the Order? I had always assumed that you'd been excommunicated for your pursuit of the Dark Arts. Oh, Shitoto's from one of the other FFs? Might be FF10 on Monday, just saying. I can't bear this any longer. <laughs> it's driving me fucking mad. It's driving me mad. It is. It is. <sighs> Excommunicated, simply for the pursuit of knowledge. Perish the thought. Though to be fair, there are many holier than thou types in the order who would share his pig headed hero's opinion. Or for Endwalker. I'll bear that in mind. We're not at Endwalker yet, that's for sure. For respect of this, the fact remains that the Order sealed away countless tomes in their vaults when they forbid the art, the art of black magic. Storing my own writings with them, I would argue, is the most logical option. But no. They are too prudish and prejudiced against yours truly to listen to reason. Then again, 
Perhaps if a thaumaturge in good standing with the order were to put in a good word on my behalf. May indeed find a more sympathetic ear. What do you say, Flo? Uh, okay. <laughs> Excellent. Well, let us hurry to the ossuary and see if we can't convince that insufferably stuffy yak yak yayaki to see good sense. Okay. <clears throat> Moments, if you please, Flo. To tell the truth, the question of where to store her records is not the only matter that confirms me about the lie of late. Recently, I cannot help but feel the etheric power within her is shifting, warping in ways that I have not felt before. As for why this is, I cannot yet be sure. So we discover more. Pray, look after her, will you? Wait, Lali's not going to die, is she? Aww. No, she'll be fine. I did think they'd killed Reen. All right, that was definitely a thing. I thought they had killed Reen. And that was, uh, I can't, I, I, they can't toy with me like that. They can't bring Minfilia back, then have Minfilia have a good send off, and then kill Reen. That's just rude, man. <laughs> that is just fucking rude. So rude, bro. <sighs> Blah! Well, this is an unexpected surprise. And that's an entirely pleasant one. Or it is not by your fault. The unmitigated gall of you, Lalai. Did you honestly believe that dragging poor Flo here against her will, no doubt, would convince me to agree to housing your shameful scribblings in our archives? I've said it once and I'll say it again. Until the day you renounce the depraved teachings of crackers, you'll find no friends here. I would see those books burn before I give them a home here. For our sake and for your own. I swear, despite the pretentious monocle, you remained as blind as a bat to the big picture. Law of the Black. Talk some sense to this overstuffed secretary. Hmm. At least one of us here is capable of communicating like an adult. I will gradually admit that there is one other who shares the lie's sentiments. In fact, it's none other than our very own guild master. Master Coco, but what was his name again? Coco Buki, yeah, you don't get his name wrong. Coco Buki, ah, does not surprise me in the least. Come, Flo, let us present our case as someone wise enough to understand it. We're going back to the Coco Bros. Oh, hypers, hypers. Coco Squad, Coco Squad, Coco Squad, Coco Squad. Hmm. I was wondering who might be behind the screaming and stamping that echoed all the way to this chamber. Sister Lalai, was it? Yes, it is true. I find myself rather convinced by the young lady's argument. It is all but impossible for us to prevent any and all from studying the dark arts. Why, then, not keep this dangerous knowledge close at hand? Where we keep an ever-watchful eye on those who'd pursue it, and yet... I fear that my own view is not a popular one, and my power to influence the others is far from absolute. And so I would offer a proposal. Let us state our case directly to the head of the order, to Prioress Dulala herself, that she might pass judgment. Dulala? Dulala! You and Lalai shall argue in favour of accepting the tones, and those opposing shall argue against. It shall all go well, the Prioress will agree to the proposal, and the tomes will have a safe home. Is this going to be like a Lalafell courtroom? <clears throat> and yet, the plan is not without risk. Should your arrangement be less than convincing, there remains a chance Dulala may expressly forbid any further research. While if she's in a particularly foul mood, your very place in the order may suddenly become quite contentious. Pay up the Ardbert Gamba? What do you mean? He absorbed the light! What are you talking about? You turned into an axe of light. I was right. Psh. Ah. He didn't die. I mean, he's gone. What do you mean? <laughs> oh, what? Ah, you're trolling. You're trolling. It was legit there at the end. 
Am I... <sighs> no more gambling with you lot, like <laughs> No more gambling with you lot. <laughs> no no more gambling with you lot. <laughs> Yeah, no more gambler with you lot. <clears throat> Gamba? Gamba? Well, that settles it. We best hurry up and prepare our argument. Out of our enemy's earshots, of course. Come, Flo. There's nothing to gamble on right now. What can I gamble on? What's out in the desert? How the fuck would I know? Is Gaius dead? I don't know. <laughs> like... No gamba. Until we start the post MSQ. No gamba. No gamba. No gamba. <laughs> you can gamble if you'll make more gambles with us. That's not fair. <clears throat> no way. No gamba. <sighs> so this is how you get an addiction problem. You start gambling on like how many steps between the walls, right? This is our chance, Flo. We simply must convince the Prioress at all costs. The future of our art depends on it. What is this curious sensation? No lie, I knew something was amiss. The ether within you is transforming in a most unusual way. I must admit, I have not felt quite myself lately. My head, it feels as heavy as stone. Well, this will not do. I'm afraid I must insist that you submit to a full examination before the hearing commences. Lala fell down! Sweep it up! Malai, Malai, can you hear me? Someone fetch a healer or... Wait, oh, I'm a healer. This is no time for panicking, friend. We must carry her to the front of the street with all speed. Oh, okay. You're only small. Lala fell, all three! If you wants you to gamble and take a chance that you're wrong, you probably shouldn't. I don't know if that's true anymore. I've won two gambers. And they still accepted the gamble. I can't trust the chat. Like, you, you guys are too tricky. I feel like you bait me with a couple of wins and then you scam me. <laughs> I fear it is as suspected. The etheric balance within her has broken down entirely. And unchecked energies are now eating away at her from within. I can only assume that playing host to Shatoto's memories has put a terrible strain on her. One from which she has yet to completely recover. Yes, it would seem that her mind and spirit are in mortal peril. I have never witnessed this degree of etheric imbalance before. I not suppose you have. Uh, well, yeah. Saruman just... <laughs> What's Saruman turned into an, uh, another man? I see. I can scarcely imagine all you have witnessed in your travels, but... An imbalance of ether similar to what I did now observe in Lalai would appear to be behind the phenomena you describe. If you could assume that the memories of Shitoto taking up residence in Lalai's corporeal form stimulated her etheric flow, causing it to shift violently in an astral direction, then it only stands to reason we could restore balance by introducing a counteracting umbral aspect. By the twelve, I think I've got it. Yes, we must kick her in the face as hard as possible and kick that ether right back down to where it came from. Delay our hearing? Have you lost what little wits you had? Why, if word got out of my condition was the result of my pursuit of the dark arts, it would be all but seal Yayaki's case against me. A lie? Out of costume? No, we must proceed as planned, before our opponents are the wiser. Lord, well, here is my magnum opus, the fruits of all we went through together. I leave them in your capable hands. Go on ahead and I'll be along in due time. What do you get if you win a gamba? 50, sub 50 subs from the chat. But if I lose, it's me paying 50 subs. So overall, it's a win-win because it's for fun, right? It's for fun. Are you mad? You can't possibly be to attend the proceedings in your current condition. Overall, the gamba is because I like very much to express my theories. 
Because, I mean, that's the point of what we're doing here, right? You guys all know the answer, of course. So, how wrong and right I am, I think, is part of the fun. <laughs> of course not. Fortunately, I just so happen to know a hero who, despite being an insufferable stick in the mud, has proved himself more than capable in the healing arts. The light. Zodiac is a big rock. I mean... Eidolon's a big rock! Right? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Eidolon's... It wasn't that crazy. There was a logic to it. I will not be made fun of. No, there was sense in that. <laughs> Eidolon is... A, <laughs> I'm not gambling. The story's done. Zodiac is gone. Get you, Zodiac. It's over. Zodiac's gone. Very well. Leave it to me. I will see that you're back on your feet before the judgment is rendered. Gamba! <laughs> Gamba! <laughs> Fuck off. It's so cruel. <laughs> Until then. You know I'm tempted, but I'm saying no. I suppose it's up to floor here. Godspeed, my friend. <sighs> uh, where was the ossuary again? Okay, Thaumaturge's Guild. Okay, okay. Well, I'm not sure what the... interracial... dynamics are. I mean, he really likes her. I think in a romantic way. But I don't know how that works. I don't think we've seen any interracial, interspecial species couples. I don't think. Have we? Well, I mean, with Lalafels, I mean, that creeps me out, bro. Oh, Hilda. Yeah, okay. I don't like it. Lady D in your solar. <laughs> I did attend a wedding like that. I suppose I did. I suppose I did. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I'll be joining the proceedings a touch late, you say. That is most unlike her, to say the least. Shiva and her... Okay, Shiva and her Alice Falga don't count, right? <laughs> That's not... That, I don't think they ever did it. I don't think they were like that. It was just love, like, love, love. Right? <sighs> Alright, I'm sure you can provide an image of proof, but I will not accept the source of that image. Let's leave it there. I will not accept the source of that image, like, a little bit. <laughs> I don't want to see it either, right? <laughs> I don't want to see it. But she has entrusted her records to you. Very well. With any luck, we will be able to use them to our advantage. Now allow me to see them. Prioress will be soon here. I don't think the sisters got with the Boulder brothers. The, the, the brothers seem a bit put off by their... Uh, pushiness. The lie has not even the courtesy to arrive on time to the hearing she herself requested. I swear the woman's selfishness knows no bounds. I move that her request be dismissed immediately. It is for her own good. Your own good. Yes. It is as I suspected. You speak from your own experience, don't you, child? I recall that you, too, once took an unpopular position in support of your erstwhile master. Ooh. One that earned you only the ire of your brothers and sisters. Yes, and what of it? I fought off for a hopeless cause that has in the end served only to isolate me from my peers. Is it so wrong I wish to save Lalai from a similar fate? I must abandon this farce at once and return to her rightful place in the Order. To this I cannot agree. In the short time before these proceedings, I perused what I could of these tomes. Their pages are writ not only forbidden secrets of black magic, but accounts of astounding phenomena the likes of which I can scarcely imagine. 
Well, I conducted her research without the support or interference of the Order, and the fruits that research has borne cannot be denied. While our guild could not support a thousand others like her, I see little to gain from stifling one woman's passion and forcing her to work within such rigid rules and regs. The merits of both arguments are not lost on me, yet I must confess a degree of ignorance about the matter at hand. All I know that black magic was forbidden for its role in bringing disaster to our world, and yet you still practice this art. Tell me, adventurer, is this magic as calamitous as the rumours say? Uh, <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> hmm. uh, I've only used it for good. From my perspective. So. Yeah. Sometimes fire is not bad. There are times when vast destructive powers are needed. This is your claim. From my observations, I suppose you may be right. Yeah, how are we to be certain that this sister Lalai can be trusted with such potentially ruinous knowledge? My apologies, Prioress. By your leave, I would tell my tale. Fucking Lala's. Black magic is an inherently dangerous art. This I cannot and will not deny. Never would I suggest that even a single mage pursue this path without full knowledge of the perils that lie ahead. That is precisely why I have recorded in painstaking detail not only the arcane knowledge I have gleaned, but every last one of the myriad phenomena, both wondrous and terrifying, I have experienced in its pursuit. Unbreakable bonds formed with beastmen we once thought our sworn enemy. Bodies and souls consumed by the pursuit of forbidden knowledge. An unspeakable calamity revisited upon our world after millennia. We must leave this knowledge to posterity that our sons and daughters do not repeat the mistakes of our past. Those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. Yes. This is the crux of your argument, then. Go on, Dulala. Go on. You wouldn't. Go on. Go on, mate. Say yeah, though. Say yeah. Very well. Master Kokobuki, I hereby order you to establish a research organization under the auspices of your guild to further study the impact of black magic. <sighs> I also grant you permission to store the aforementioned tomes in your archives, under the condition that Sister Lalai oversees them. Understood. I will see that both the tomes and Lalai herself find a safe home within our halls. Yeah. I still not entirely convinced. If the guild master himself is willing to accept responsibility, I have no reason to oppose. Iris Dulala, Master Kokobuki, I cannot thank you enough. Mark my words, you will not regret this decision. I will see to it that this knowledge is passed down as it should be, that the errors of our past will never be repeated. Safe magic. He wants to practice safe magic. Magic that goes boom. Much better. I do believe the proceedings went about as well as could be expected. I suppose this means that the lie is now directly under my supervision. I don't think you'll be getting a free reign around here simply because I vouched for your child. I expect regular reports on any and all of your findings. Only through transparency will black magic ever be accepted by doubters and skeptics. Understood. I shall begin to prepare my first report once. Before that, there is another with whom I'd like to share these tidings. That is by your leave, Guildmaster. I believe you know well of whom I speak. He awaits us at the Sacrarium. Come along, Flo. So, I mean, I don't think we're going to get a new spell out of this. But mayhaps, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> very distracting. Um,
the black mage is now an officially recognized art form of the mages, which is nice after, you know, three expansions. That's nice to know. And so you see, I simply thought that, well, so is the matter, Lali. This is your moment of triumph. I'd expect you to be more triumphant. Of course I am. It's simply that, well, clearly I did not have... I did not accomplish this on my own, so... Floor of the Black, and yes, y you as well, Zaya. You have my deepest gratitude. I dare say this has been a momentous day in more ways than one. Once again, Lali, my congratulations. And you are most welcome. With that, I should be on my way. But next we meet, I would introduce my colleagues from Stillglade Fane. Now that you're no longer a pariah, I suppose they would not be averse to exchanging knowledge with you. Now kiss! Oh. And just when I was beginning to take a liking to that dolt. I'll tell you right though, my official position may have changed. My mission remains the same. I'll do all in my power to preserve our art for future generations. Pray continue to lend me your aid, Floor of the Black. Nice. Aw, that's nice. That's nice. That makes me haps. Got the mail. Yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> I don't know what twinning is. You can't just say twinning time. I don't know what that is. You guys having uh, a rest, eh? I understand you suffer from wild brainitis. I'm truly sorry for your affliction. As such, I diligently farm the attached so you can feel more at home. No more NPC bullying. Stygian Ash. <laughs> very generous of you. That's very, very generous of you. Thank you. Thank you. It's <sighs> very kind of you. Delete. 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 We're actually getting on top of this. The five deletes per mail is working out well. We're winning. We're winning that one. Um, okay, so we're split between two worlds now. So, like, where are the... Like, let me head over to... Christarium real quick. No, I did not mean to send me six mails every time you're sending something. No, I didn't mean that. Right, so we've got quests that have popped up now. Middle of nowhere. Oh, okay. Manic Pixie Dream Realm. That was a Beast Tribe thing. Minstrel from another mother. In the middle of nowhere. The Aspiring Skywatcher. By the time you hear this. These are all level 80 things. Let me go see what these are then. Uh, the Minstrel is the Extremes. Excellent. I do want to do them. I really want to do Vaughthry Extreme. Uh, and obviously... A edgy Salad. For sure. I bet I could do that. Huh. How long were you standing there in silence? But you know it's rude to... Aren't you that mortal bonded to Feo Ul? Now, listen, this is a pleasant surprise. I have a proposal. I was meaning to put to you as it happens. Interested? So these sky watchers you see all over, they're good at what they do. But even they can't tell you if it's raining or whatever back on the source, no? With my help, they could. I could cross the rift, see what the weather's like for myself, come back and share my knowledge with these mortals by whispering to them in their dreams. I could do the same for the sky watchers on the other side, too. Everyone have all the answers and they wouldn't even know where they got them. <laughs> wouldn't that be grand? Your silence as well. Approval I need. Off I go. What? Due to law fail, meddling with the dreams of Skywatchers in the source and the first, Skywatchers may now provide forecasts for every region, regardless of their location. Why does that matter? Explain to me, someone. Why does the weather matter? I've seen this pop up a few times about weather forecasts and things like that. For fishing and gathering. So the weather actually has effects and you check the weather forecast before you go? That's super interesting. We should get into some crafting at some point. 
for sure. Okay. Uh, by the time you hear this, let's go see what that is. We're also about the middle of nowhere. Bethana. By the time you hear this, Bethana of the Crystarium Guard has a look of grim determination in her eyes. Uh, there's also a quest in Alamigo that's also for Shadowbringers. Okay. Wait, is this is this the raid? Because if it is, we shouldn't start it today. Okay. Excuse me. A word if you'd be so kind. We are of the Crystarium Guard, have a quest to make of you. Our researchers are planning to enter the Crystal Tower to learn more of its history. However, there is a problem. Now, what I'm about to reveal is strictly confidential. Were word to get out, panic would spread throughout the citizenry. Our scouts have reported that ferocious beasts and bizarre machines roam the hallways. Allegans. Until we can eliminate these threats, none may enter. Strange ethereal readings have also been detected, and we suspect that the phenomena are linked. The Exarch has ordered us to seek your aid in making the tower safe for our researchers to go about their work. He mentioned that you're better equipped than most to face the dangers that lurk in the tower, though he elected to go into detail. Is this true? <laughs> no. And your prior experience may prove beneficial. Come, let us proceed to the entrance. Alright. Why now? Why after all this time of... Things come to life inside the tower. Weird. <laughs> Background music's already a hundred, dudes. I can't. I can't go any bigger. I take it your preparations are complete. Listen carefully. You have to lead a party of elite troops into the tower and respond to any hostility with lethal force. Once the way is clear, the researchers can begin their expedition. Our main objective is to identify the source of the ethereal disturbance. The tower cannot be considered safe until we do. Should you encounter any opposition beyond your capabilities, you have to withdraw immediately. I wish you the best of luck. You got a dungeon? Okay. Uh, go on, you wouldn't. <laughs> I would, I would, you know. I would for you. Uh, I got Freya. Got Jakey. There you go. <laughs> Down to twin and clown. <laughs> Have we got a squad? Have we got a good squad? I have no idea, Mappy, so I have no idea who's doing what. Okay, the music's very good, is what I'm getting. So I can do this. There you go. Should be a bit louder for you. It's gonna be a banger, okay. The sign that rolls out. Oh my god, there's still subs coming in. I'm unbelievable. I'm, I'm overwhelmed today, guys. Lee, Re Lee, thank you very much. Sin, Caligo, Deontel, Gusty, uh, the Ark Virgin, thank you for the two months. I can't wait for you to reach Endwalker, Mike. Neither can I, but I, I also don't want to burn out. Like, we've been doing story, I think, non stop for like. I don't know. Two weeks? Pretty much. Like, just relentless story, but I mean, I've been enjoyed every second of it, so. At the same time, I'm having a blast, but it's been relentless. And I don't want to get, like, burned out at some point. So we'll, we'll probably take a little diversion towards the raid, and we'll play a different Final Fantasy game. Oh, the shoulders! Rocket! Disco, disco. Ah, uh, back to the Allegan Empire. You 
gotta admit, their dungeons are so pretty. They're so good. Is that your stupid big blue dragon thing? It's too big, man. Yes, I thought so. I haven't seen that blue dragon for a while until you joined the party again. Oh shit, what's happening here? Been a while, baby. It's been a while. It's okay for now. As long as I know where it's coming from, that's fine. We're not going to have to ride these lifts, are we? I'm not great with lifts, just letting you guys know. It's a British thing. You mean elevators? No, I mean lifts. I know what I mean. Uh, there's a big dragon over there, dudes. A mighty big dragon. Oh, they played the song live. Oh, I see. Bex is looking me a, a live version of this. It was a jam. Watch the live version after. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to stop the dungeon to watch it. This isn't a Rich Campbell stream. I'll, I'll keep playing for an appropriate time, you know? Dragons busted out of cages. These crystal tower things. Whee! Hello, big fella. I, for I almost forgot that they give you all these dungeons at the end. Uh, these creatures are going to break out of here, right? Uh, I'm number four. We're good. I did not know that would happen. In my defense, I did not know that would happen. Okay? <laughs> That's not fair. Like, don't blame that on me, man. In my defense, okay? 
Now, trust when I say that won't happen again, right? Shit. Right? You've got to respect that. You've got to respect it won't happen again. Sloppy. <laughs> Sloppy. I was trying, I was trying. Look, see, I'm nice and safe. Okay? See? That's the difference. That's the difference there. Just break all of them so you have more room. Uh, something toxic's in there. Is that Blizz HQ over there? Shouldn't we go the other way? The hope lies in the Crystal Tower. Though it did not yield its secrets easily, even opening the doors was a monumental undertaking. Without the Founders' data logs and the Noah reports left by the Scion Saint Koinig, we would never have stood a chance of succeeding. None of us were prepared for the spectacle that awaited us when we first stepped into the tower. To be surrounded by the marvels of a lost age took our breath away, and there is the center we found it. So this is where uh, Catboy was asleep, was it, in stasis? I wonder how they got in, because they needed the blood of the royals to get in here originally. I wonder if they had to, like, scam some blood or something. I think it said Sid was long dead by the time they got inside, right? Is there any of the... I wonder if there's any of the Ironworks that have an exceedingly long lifespan. I think Jesse was human, right? I'm not sure about Biggs and Wedge's uh, situation. Like, would Wedge have survived all those years? Like, Allison have a ludicrously long uh, lifespan, right? Nice if there's somebody we knew who was uh, still alive after all those years, pushing, living out Sid's dream. Oh, did I miss the notes? I do want to read the notes. Did I miss one? Oh, it's over on the side, yeah. Our research into the Emperor's throne is almost complete. As we now understand the methods used to open a doorway to the world of darkness, although I'm known as the 13th. However, this is only the beginning of our plan. Even if we find a way to the first, it is already too late to prevent the eighth number calamity. For that, we must travel not only to another world, but to another time. Thankfully, the data logs gathered over the years, detailing battles with various primals, pointers in the right direction. Okay. Yeah, we do know of a giant time-traveling cat robot. That we know. Overshot my mark. There's always a weird cat. Never feel bad about stopping and reading the lore when you first go through. Fuck that. If people are getting pissy about it, fuck them.
if you really have a social like uh, awkwardness about it, what you could do is like just grab it and screenshot it, move on. You know, you could do something like that. Just as we thought the pieces were in place, we came to the realization that traversing time and space has its difficulties. It is one thing to possess the technology necessary to enable such a feat, quite another to actually perform it. The interdimensional rift, as it was called in the Founder's Day vlogs, is what I can only describe as infinite chaos. To navigate it would take expertise far beyond our ken. There was, however, once a being capable of exactly that. The one known as Omega. And yet, despite all the research carried out, the mystery of how it was able to cross the rift remains unsolved. Omega. We must find and kill Chaos. Safe, right? Yeah. All Well, we just got that wombo combo. Wombo combo. Shit. I'll leave it a sec. It's spicy there. I'm sure we had enough time. I'm sure we were good. I'm sure we were good. Do you want me to turn the music down a bit now? Have the song silk chilled a bit? Can do. No. <laughs> no. What the hell? No. Oh! Oh! Is that a liquid? Oh, it is. Are we in goo? I believe we are in goo. Live stream? Uh, I mean, why would the live streamer down here? Not down here, but I'm confused. Just ether in general? Yeah, that makes a bit more sense. In we go, guys. Right, is there a document? Ha! I don't know 
this Eureka thing is, but I should check it out. I should. Yeah, everyone keeps bringing Eureka up, like, uh, oh yeah, this is a Eureka thing. I uh, still don't know what Eureka is. A huge grind fest. That's what some people have said. And other people have like, well, actually, if you do like an hour of it, there's a lot to see and do. I mean, I should just find out for myself, right? That should, that, that should be the play. Just gotta have a look at it. Maybe if I got time over the weekend, I can have a look at it. I don't think anybody will get mad at me for doing Eureka off stream.
All we're going to do later is get my drill out and just go and drill holes in office walls. That's my plan. Come on, we've got drama time. It's Alligans. It's Alligans. Right, we'll be, we'll be back later. They're called Alligans. Don't worry about it. They time travel and shit. They, they have big tech. Oh, no. Has come to carry out our plan. This will be my last recording. With the tower activated and the temporal displacement apparatus online, all that remains is to throw the switch and pray. I don't think it's a robot. I think it's, it's, it's somebody from the team, I think. I'm sorry. I truly am. I wish there was another way. But you are the best chance of success. Our only hope. Your gift will allow you to become one with the tower and survive the... Oh, it's a message to Catboy. Journey through time and space. Were our technology as advanced as that of the Alligans, perhaps we could have gone with, it with you. gone with you. Alas, it was not to be. But when you are finally reunited, all of the hardship, all of the sacrifice, will have been worth it. I'm sure. Just promise me you'll spare a thought for those you leave behind. And we'll be thinking of you too. For as long as the world lasts, though I fear it will not be for much longer. Oh. <laughs> this is Biggs. Third of his name. 18th president of Garland Ironworks. Signing off. May the 12th be at your side. Rahatia. Person's voice coming from a machine. To be honest, I cannot make head nor tail of it. Do you have any idea who it's about? Nodders. Hmm. Considering your connection with the Exarch, I'm not entirely surprised. The one thing was clear, even to me. The people who left that message were facing a great catastrophe. They placed their faith in the Crystal Tower, in much the same way we have done ever since the Flood of Light. Our prayers of salvation were answered when you and the Exarch returned. Night to us and freed us from the terror of the Sin Eaters. I sense that this was all made possible by those people from a time long forgotten. We should do our utmost to learn more of them. Perhaps the researchers will uncover more of these messages. In any case, you have performed admirably in service to Crystarium. We may have need of your strength and guidance in days to come. Until then, fare you well. Godspeed. Godspeed. All hail the Ironworks. Praise be. I wouldn't surprise me if the Ironworks are actually the, the masterminds behind the trolley. That wouldn't surprise me one little bit. Speaking of stories! Speaking of tales that set to virtue... Tales to make your toes curl. Stories to keep you awake at night. It is time. Audio delayed? It's okay. I'll fix it in a sec. Give it a sec. Whoop, 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 whoop. Up, up. Still not there. Ah, nah, 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 nah. Swap between. Test, 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 test. Oof. Oof, that's delayed. Oofers. Uh, 
I'll put a manual delay on it, have you? We're not sure what driver time is. Ladies and gentlemen, from around the world, we have people every week send us their tales of the weird and wonderful that happen across the globe. And for 10 seasons, we have spent an hour on a Friday to celebrate that period of time. To regale each other with these crazy tales of what people anonymously do across the internet whenever they have time. <sighs> Two recommendations from Bex of the five stories she's put in front of me here today. Uh, a love affair via a mobile game. <laughs> what? A Final Fantasy XIV tale. I tried my hardest to be a fun free company leader. I think we start with that, don't you, ladies and gentlemen? I think we start with that. Before we get in, I'm going to take my five minutes just to stretch for my final thing of the day. I think we start with the tale of somebody really, really trying to be a fun, fun free company leader i bet they did a great job i can almost feel it in my bones <laughs> i can feel it in my bones that they did a wonderful wonderful job of being that all right so i'm gonna start the counter now bex could you do the tweet they tried so hard they tried so hard it's gonna be tragic and cringe isn't it countdown begins now i should hang on let me start dialing my wife before i press the countdown
of our Friday has dawned on us one more time, my friends, as we come to one of the final drama times that will take place in our setting here in front of the green screen and doing all this stuff because we are moving in just a couple of weeks. And what a momentous week it has been. To all our guests here from Eorzea or Azeroth or whichever home planet you call home, we have come to the end of the Shadowbringers MSQ. I cried twice today. Count it. Twice I ca <laughs> Twice I cried. Adding to a grand total of three times in my entire life that a video game has brought a tear to my eye. Uh, I did not weep openly, but the, 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 the water was there. The salty tears did arrive in good times. Uh, much to the expectations, I believe, of our wonderful audience as it happened. Feel strong. The other game was a game called Rhyme that we played... Uh, probably two years ago now probably two years ago now that cut yet <laughs> yet i also cried it was a very emotional day it has taken its toll my brain is weary and fuzzy oh god uh, it was a whole adventure it was a whole adventure that went on but yes well worth it it now has qualified as the best rpg story i have ever taken part in, in a video game for sure and the best use of the medium of video games in order to tell a story i've ever seen i can't wait to i can't wait to literally sit down and i know as lame as it sounds but to actually kind of let out the dust settle mentally as to what's happened today the free company is ready for drama what is this is this happening right now <laughs> this is amazing so the, <laughs> the ff free company currently has a live a, a theater inside their room as you can see here, where they're watching drama. <laughs> they have a theater inside one of their rooms that is broadcasting drama time to them. That's 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 something you don't see in many other games at all, but that is happening right now. You have a wonderful bunch of people. There are new guests. What is drama time? Welcome. Well, for the last few years, every Friday, we like to finish the streaming week with a simple thing, is that across the internet, there is many anonymous play people. We don't know who they are. We spend our days, we spend our nights with these people, but we don't really know what's in, what's in their minds, what's in their souls. And every now and again, due to the power of anonymity, uh, they uh, reveal themselves, uh, sometimes in a fun and interesting way, sometimes in a dark and twisted way, sometimes in a lovely, lovely, nice way, and sometimes in a way that may raise many red flags for you. And Drama Time was that goal, especially during my World Warcraft days, of letting people know of things that maybe, you've, maybe this is happening to you, and maybe you should be a bit more aware. And it has, over the years, protected literally hundreds of thousands of people from being trapped in horrible situations. But we encourage you all to send your tales in. Uh, we have a simple email. This is drama at preachgaming.com. Or you can go to our website, preachgaming.com, uh, where you can not only find every drama story we've ever done, including some tags if you're looking for particular styles of stories, but also to submit your own and be a part of the experience. Uh, that is what we encourage. So I have one that's been recommended here about a free company guild, uh, a guild leader, is doing his best to be fun now i kind of get office vibes from this <laughs> whether this person is somebody who is going to go really really far to be mr popular <laughs> mr popular uh we'll see we'll see a bench too far yes whether i'm sure we've all encountered these guys who are desperate to give us the most fun experience we possibly can sometimes it's my guess anyway i don't know where this story goes all our stories are vetted by wonderful bex in the chat right now who reads through these for me so i can go in completely blind and uh, enjoy the experience along with you guys it is a, a wonderful thing it's me your fun teacher you're not having fun in the right way so let's dive in and see what's happening let's let's dive in a pleasant good evening to you, Preacher, and all the wonderful folks of the jury. I have a bit of a tale to tell to you of how I tried to push for a free company in Final Fantasy XIV to be revived from solo hosting and running community events, how we spent a late night evening playing a roleplay volleyball game with courtesans from sorting out a roleplay cafe venue and running a, a week-long RP vacation at the Costa del Sol. 
and how the final nail in the coffin was because I wanted a piece of garden furniture moved. As a disclaimer, this was two or three years ago. I don't require, I don't remember every single detail, but I'm sure you will get the gist. Okay. It all began, as these things often do, when I returned to Final Fantasy XIV, after a long hiatus to work on my mental and physical health. I was in my mid-twenties at this point, but that isn't really relevant. I don't even know why I wrote it. Either way, I returned to the game amidst a big out-of-character slash RP drama. I couldn't even tell you what was happening. I didn't care to make that drama my business. All I can tell you is the current leader was stepping down due to pressure from the other members of the free company due to her doing some questionable things. What were they? I never asked. But she was always lovely to me, so whatever. I, in all my returning to the game, more mature glory was put forward as a potential officer replacement candidate. I gladly accepted. The narcissist in me gawked at the officer rank. I wanted that shiny rank. Inside me, I wanted to lord it over other people. But we don't do that. No one should do that. Spending time in officer positions teaches you one thing. Even if you're an officer, it doesn't mean shit to others in the free company if you don't foster respect. Especially after 75% of the guild goes on an exodus, leaving a bare-bones crew and about five active members who still play after the current leader quits and everyone is burnt out from the drama that I return to. So there I am. Back from my big break. Bright-eyed, refreshed, bushy-tailed, raring to go. Getting things in this free company rolling again. It'll be as good as it was. Make FF great again. While in hindsight, I realize now that everyone around me was absolutely sick to death of everything. So what to do? What do we even do in this scenario? What can I as an officer do to push this guild forward? So we sit on it for a bit. We do some idle adventures, little role plays, go to other events, get to know each other better in character and out. So, in total, as I said, there are five of us. Five people. Lodge. A wonderful and fun, caring person who honestly didn't deserve anything bad to happen to her, the current leader. Myself, an officer. Mitchell, who by my reckoning was... a bit of a weirdo. You know what I mean. We do. Only after one conversation with, <laughs> with Mitchell did I figure that he was creepy. A creepy uncle figure. He was always hugging people. Handing out cookies when you walked by. Spamming emotes in the chat. Hmm. <laughs> I wonder. Honestly, freaked me out a little bit. There was Batch. A nice old raw package deal with Mitchell due to their roleplay story. They were tight-knit, and she always had something negative to say about everything. And was, and I'll put it this way, very outspoken about her feelings. <sighs> they played, they were the straight guy. Not sexually, but the straight man. Straight as an arrow, the straightest guy you'll ever meet. Didn't really make jokes. They were against any kind of jokes or talk of drinking or drugs. But he was nice and no one could dislike him. And this is our regular team. Usually online and playing the game together. The first thing I try is something simple. Let's warm it up. A role play cafe. They're quite popular. I've never been to one of these. People seem to enjoy them. We could possibly draw some people into our free company maybe. Bring some attention to ourselves as a group who puts events on. Get fresh life, motivation for people to get involved. You know what the hardest thing to do in any leadership position is, Mike? Or any officer position that involves other people? Getting them to actually fucking do something. <laughs> 
Motivating other people over the internet to do literally anything beyond what they personally want to do is the most pain in the balls activity in the world, bar tasing them. But I did it. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> my first step was to make a free company Tumblr account. <laughs> <laughs> step one make a tumblr account <laughs> okay sure i mean it's not my step one but uh you know <laughs> whichever way you want to go is whichever way you want to go i made us a tumblr i made a menu i put us on an rp calendar and we had people show up the first week then the second week then the week after then people stopped coming stormblood released we never made the cafe again. But still to this day, I think it wasn't a complete failure. We we did some stuff. But as with all things, stat time passed. Stormblood was moving on. We do the main story quest. We do the content. We gear up. We do more content. Eventually, though, as always in any MMO, the content runs dry. We're waiting for a patch to drop. So I wonder, what else can we do now? Tensions are a little high. We're starting to notice we don't really like each other. <laughs> we don't all get along. And since it's the middle of summer, I had a grand idea. What if we would take free company roleplay vacations every couple of months? We'll go to a location, not really visited much, and we'll stay there for a week, and we'll do a little role play there, you know? We'll have some fun in different environments. See if anyone wants to join us. We'll RP with people who might be passing by while we chill on the beach. We'll prepare games and events that we could do every day. So, I do it. I put it all together. I make a little schedule. I sit down and I plan out games, I plan out events, so that we had something to do every single day of the week. Day one. Goes well. People take part. People are enjoying themselves. The second day. All the tension that we'd all been feeling towards each other in the free companies ebbing away a bit. The third day. People are lazy now. Unmotivated. They can't be asked to play any of the game ideas I have. I have to start moaning and physically drag them to play a game where we throw a ball to each other and ask truths of each other. Jesus, <laughs> I'm not playing that. <laughs> no, man. <laughs> no way. No way. That's an icebreaker. That's a day one game. I'm not doing that. The fourth day. Now I'm unmotivated by how unmotivated and so against everything else and so against everything these people are. It's tiring. I'm trying to put together dumb fun. Organized dumb fun. And they can't be asked. Whatever. I don't think we lasted the whole week before we're just back in our free company house. Some time passes. A failed second vacation to the gold saucer passes. And hey, at least summer is almost over. So I decide, why don't we do a summer event on the beach and invite people from around the server? I had come up with an actually really fun game to play in RP that was a mix of volleyball and dodgeball. I could see it being played in reels. I set it up, I made a poster, I put it on Tumblr, I put the date up, and I send a request to the roleplay calendar. It goes up the next day. We're all set, ladies and gents. I arrive to set up my event, and it turns out there's another free company having an event in the spot I had chosen. Are you for real? <laughs> what the fuck? But this is my spot. I don't know how how serious is the RP calendar. Is it like beholden? <laughs> Are you like beholden or what? You got a bucket? Didn't secure the lease? <laughs> it's my spot. <laughs> But these guys aren't taking their role play in a more wholesome manner. They're doing a drinking event. Mine is a beach activities event. So I speak to them. And we merge the two together. 
They seem like they're having fun. The people from both events turn up and they have a drink before we all come down to play a round of my made-up game. It goes great. But after this, it kind of died down. The beach quietens. I believe we did a sandcastle building competition where people would creatively come up with sandcastles to build. And it was honestly enjoyable to read some of the descriptions. One of them drew a picture, which I saved for you. <laughs> Okay, dude. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> what is that? Oh, that's magnificent. It really is. That's that's really good. Oh, round of applause. Come on now, we got a picture. Wait, so am I getting this right? Your sandcastle competition is somebody just describing a sandcastle to you? Is that what it is? I would build a Talos. I would. Big one. Is that the sandcastle competition? You sit around and you describe sandcastles? Not my kind of RP, let's put it that way. <clears throat> Not my kind of RP. Okay. He was so proud of his picture. But then it really quietens down. No one else turns up. I stick around for a little with my free company mates while we chill on the beach. I then get a message. Hey mate, our free company event will be ending soon. Can we come and spend some time with you guys? This is what I've been waiting for. People who want to join in with us. I, I'm i like, sure. I can keep it going till then. I'd love to host another game for you. A couple of hours of uneventful, quite depressing beach role play with my free company happens. A couple of hours? What the fuck? We really realize we do not get along. Well, I get along with Lodge. With Mitchell and Batch constantly bickering with me because I dare push for events. Try to motivate them to do more. But all Mitchell seems interested in is dating our free company leader in character. As some kind of replacement for a real love interest. He later finds a real life girlfriend and suddenly stops being interested in Lodge. Shock horror. Who could have seen that coming? He's still creeping me out though by handing out cookies. I just start calling him creepy uncle to Lodge. <laughs> but then. As they promised. The other free company turns up. My sages of the night. I have kept this party dragging on like a long funeral. But now it's going to pop off. And it's the biggest brothel on the data center at the time. I don't mind. Sure. I'll hang out with the ladies. Could be fun. It turns out they're pretty nice people. Turns out they're pretty chill people. We set up my game, fair teams, and we begin playing. The ball flying this way and that. I smash the ball into a guy's face and make remarks about him not used to taking balls in the face. Ha ha ha. And our night eventually ends. And I get an invitation to the free company for an all expenses paid full service for one night of my choosing. I mean, why wouldn't I go to a brothel for free and get everything I want? Oh no. Oh dear. Oh no. <laughs> it was after this event <laughs> where things start going downhill. It's been a pretty downwards trend in motivation and mood. Constantly being rebuked for everything I try to do. Having all my ideas shot down. Being unwilling to get involved with things I do to try and help the free company. And we decide to redecorate the house some as something to do. And the garden as well. Let's work on that as a team. Mitchell and Batch are given officer roles so that they can help out. Now forgive the tangent, though I think Batch had it earlier than this, since there was only five of us, Lodge just started handing out officer roles to the active group. I wasn't happy about this, since they had a history of actively, and very verbosely, moaning about everything I tried to do. Do you feel you've got a control issue? I'm just saying, it comes across, you wrote this, and it feels like you might have a control issue. A little bit. Is it just passion? Maybe? Is it just passion? <laughs> is that all it is? Probably just passion, right? Probably just passion. Mitchell was given an officer role since he wanted to decorate the garden. This was a large house, so we had a huge garden. Lodge had decorated the middle floor and the top floor, and I was given the basement to decorate. I did a pretty good job of it. 
I made a great roleplay space with training rooms, a bar, a lounge for various groups to get together. Now the garden, I'll admit, he did a good job. It was laid out nicely. But you know when someone is really, really proud of what they have done? Well, I suggested, more of a request really, that maybe we should just move this one bench. Just move this bench from where it is now to just over there. That's it. It was in the way. Free company chat set on fire. First with Batch. Always quick to defend him. Can't let his feelings be hurt. And then Mitchell chiming in. It was a fucking mess. Me not understanding how they could be so upset over suggesting a bench move stood my ground. Now I'm quite stubborn. I don't think it's unreasonable to want a bench moved. In hindsight, I should have probably dropped it. But I didn't. I persisted. And it turned into a personal attack. They were happy to bring up that they had that I had the whole basement to decorate. And I politely informed them that yes, if they wanted something added or changed there, I would consider it. At this point, I'm also feeling pretty underappreciated for all the effort I have put into this free company. I'm solo organizing, running public events, marketing the free company. I've made a Tumblr account. Other free companies are more appreciative of my efforts than my own free company. So of course I'm angry and I'm ready to stand my ground about the fucking bench. Move the bench! Culmination of everything up to this point all boils over. They end up deleting the bench. They remove it completely. At this point, I am fucking done with these guys. Done try to save this failing, toxic free company from all my friends who was one of the founders back in the day. This lasted two hours. I wish I still had the logs I saved to send my friends to show how her this bullshit. Creepy uncle and his conniving old Ra, who does everything in her power to protect him, the smallest of his feelings can have their way. I wish I could say I f quit the free company and did my own thing. Well, I did do my own thing. I started a new free company, a Magitech company, with someone I met in another free company. <laughs> it ended up being quite popular as it happens, and we're doing well. So we're in talks to take over that huge free company house, since we're all actually doing something with it. And something I still kind of regret. We pushed for the house a little too hard. Okay, so I didn't want to push hard. I wanted to wait for the decision to be made. But peer, peer pressure from the other two I was working with to bring the Magitech company to life forced me to start laying down some ultimatums to lodge. Ultimatums I didn't want to give. It didn't work. I ended up having to leave. But I think that tale of breakdown is for another time. I feel like I've written enough. Or maybe the time I was accused of being toxic and manipulative and trying to steal someone's house from them. I can believe it. <laughs> I can't believe it. The moral of my tale, don't be too proud. If you're too proud of what you've done, don't criticize it. But do anyway because people need to learn how to take criticism. Just be constructive. Don't be a dick. Peace and love and garden benches. Now, okay, yeah, I feel like... <laughs> Uh, hmm. There's no judgment been asked for. There's been no judgment asked for here. But. You do sound like you're very pushy. You want people to spend a whole week doing your roleplay games with their free gaming time. That's asking a lot. That's asking a whole lot. A full week of doing your games for hours and hours and hours. Sat on a beach, not even enjoying yourself. You're not even enjoying yourself. You got that, right? <laughs> Insurrection will not be tolerated. Uh... <sighs> Oh my god. I don't know, a week? A week? Oh my god. Oh thanks. I don't think so. Let's 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 just let's find out about mother. It be your mother. 
yeah, to the author, fuck that. Yeah, I agree. I Even I, I go to, look, this isn't me being cool, but we go to some pretty huge parties. And even then, five hours is a good amount of time to be there. Right? And that's with, like, thousands of people doing the absolute most ridiculous shit. <laughs> right? That's, that's with a good portion of thousands of people doing absolutely bonkers shit. And five hours is kind of... Even there, I'm going to be tired, right? Oh, it's Sai. Excellent. Oh, his eyes. Enos. Oh, my God. Who are these people? Dutch? Jimmy? Keg? Oh, we need a guild name. All right, we need a guild name, team. Live audience, we need a guild name. I don't know what role Bex has put you in for, Enos, but we'll see. Uh, had the week in the game days, it would have been like four hours hating each other. That's a babel, but an IRL week is too much. For real. For real. <laughs> Vorthry's boys. <laughs> the garden benches. I'll take the garden benches. We'll take the garden benches. That's perfect. The garden benches. Okay, here we go. It be your own mother. Hmm. Richard, chat. I hope this story finds your, its way into your drama time. I've been sub to your channel for years, and I've been binge watching some of Drama Time at work, and have motivated me to, enough to try and share my own little tale with you. I haven't been a long time watcher of Drama Time, but of the videos that I have watched, it's been drama on PC games such as World of Warcraft and Final Fantasy XIV. For my story, though, we need to go darker. We need to go into the real slime. I want to take you, even momentarily, to the realm of mobile gaming. Oh, Jesus. Can you even talk to each other on mobile games? I assume on some, right? Yeah, brace yourselves. We need to strap in for this. This could get real nasty. It could do. This is from a little game called Unison League. All right, we're checking. Unison League. Never heard of it. It's not Raid Shadow Legends, is it? Unison League. What is this? It's on iOS. Oh, God, it's Weeby. All right, I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. Okay. Uh, yeah, all right. Uh, Unison League, the God's Blessing. Yeah, a bot. <laughs> <laughs> the breasts are insane. Is she charging with her breasts? Is that is she suddenly is she and she walks into a room and then her face walks in five minutes after she's already entered, right? This is insane. We got a gameplay picture. There's just a lot of people in dresses pointing at things with big swords. It's for excess magic storage. Okay. All right. It looks like uh, it looks like a little RPG game, I guess. For our audio listeners on Spotify, it looks like a, a typical sort of JRPG mobile game. That's what it looks like to me. That, that's that's what I get from it anyway. So uh, we'll assume it's something like that, shall we? It's a gacha game. I mean, it's mobile. What do you expect? <clears throat> now, I know that the thought of mobile games probably sends shivers up your spines and your chat to vomit. I actually don't play mobile games. I have none on my phone besides what my kids play sometimes. I have balloons and Angry Birds, and that's for my kids. But in my opinion, mobile games can still be fun and still offer an outlet for times where a PC or console aren't ready available. Buy a Switch, dude. There's no time that's true. Stick a Switch in your pants. You can play on the shitter. Easy. And with the right game... You could still find some juicy drama. And the mobile game was the last place I thought I would bear witness to drama. A little backstory. I'm 25 years old, currently living in the meme state that is Florida, US of A. I like Florida. <laughs> For tourism. <clears throat> I've been playing video games for almost my entire life. I've been a huge fan of Blizzard games, in particular the one that began all the stories. Warcraft 3 <laughs> and World of Warcraft since its release. I live a somewhat poor life growing up. One of the many things that my parents couldn't afford to give us in particular was a smartphone. I was stuck with a Nokia flip phone all the way up until 8th grade in 2011. See, I predate all this. Like a flip phone was giga cool when I was at school. <laughs> a flip phone was giga cool when I was at school. <laughs> Especially if you had that one for the Matrix that slid down. Oof. 
Oh, you were getting some pussy with that thing. That thing was just... Oh, you could just go out in a nightclub with that thing and you were just like, done. All the girls were pregnant. As soon as you clicked it down, whole room pregnant. Instantaneously. Oh, yeah. Did you ever have that giant Nokia that had the buttons on the side? And a fucking screen in the middle? That thing was good. That was cool. <laughs> that thing was badass. It was a big brick. <laughs> it had an MP3. I think, yeah, the end gauge. That was it. The end gauge. That thing was badass. It had like an MP3 player in it and stuff. Wow. Yeah, baby. <clears throat> Even then, the new phone that my mother bought me at the time was a Samsung slide phone. Which model I honestly could not remember, but was honestly still kind of shit. Especially as the years. I mean, that's what your mum could afford, man. Come on now. Still some kind of shit, especially as the years gone by where almost everyone at school now had a smartphone. To my parents' eyes, as long as you can use it for being a phone or messages, then it's good enough. True, I still think that today with my kids. <laughs> Sorry to tell you. Shortly before graduating high school, I decided to enlist in the United States Army in 2015, where I was finally able to purchase my very own smartphone. The iPhone 6S after completing basic training. Being super excited for family having for finally having a smartphone, I was glued to it for days, trying to learn all the things that I could do with it, especially finding games, mostly RPGs. Around springtime 2016, after spending weeks finding a potential game to invest myself in, I came across Unison League. At this time, I have been through several mobile RPG games, and those games have barely been able to keep my attention. Mostly because the majority of mobile RPG games revolve around automated gameplay where you press an auto button and the game plays itself. Now you could argue that just don't use the auto button, but the auto feature would be the most efficient way to play the game. And why would we ever play games if we're not going to min-max? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> see your point. The overall gameplay would still be horse shit without using it, and I could not make myself reach to whatever end those games offered to see if it gets any better. Unison League looked interesting enough on the Apple Store, so I downloaded the game and started playing. At the time, Unison League had five classes that you could choose from. The Soldier, the Tanker, the Tank Class. The Lancer, the Melee Physical DPS. The Archer, physical range the cleric the healer and the mage the ranged man oh these are very creative <laughs> very creative classes in this game i thought the lancer's ability to break enemies to allow extra damage to be done to them would be fun so i went lancer side note you're not stuck to, are you trying to sell us this game you're not stuck to a single class so you're able to switch classes freely later on during the game i created my character and set off into the world of Unison League. I played it for about an hour and then stopped. The game's features was locked in a way similar to doing the MSQ in FF14. You had to progress through the story to level up in the beginning, and certain story points would unlock additional content in the game. However, after a couple of months after not finding new RPGs, I came back to Unison League. This time, I decided to try and go for progress, as I could in the game and see... What does this beautiful game have to offer? After playing Unison League for a couple of months now, learning the game, leveling up, getting geared up, I thought I was ready to join a guild. Oh, you can join a guild? And take my Unison League journey to the next level. In Unison League, you can join a guild of up to 10 players. More on the 10-player cap later. Unison League has a social main hub to hang out in to potentially socialize with other players. While sitting in this hub, I spot a chat bubble appear above my screen. It was someone recruiting for their guild for an activity called Battles. I was nervous at first to actually try and apply to their guild. I did not know what to expect from what appeared to be a serious guild environment. <laughs> On a mobile phone? <laughs> oh, shit. Woo! Things are getting real. Oh, it's getting real. <clears throat> what if I turned out I was too bad? What if I got removed for being a crap player? What if I, sp if I said, fuck it? I must take a chance. Because whatever commitments to a guild on a mobile game could impose on me couldn't be as bad as what I'd already been through in World of Warcraft. <laughs> also, what's the worst that can happen? Kick me from the guild? <sighs> so I gave it a shot. I messaged the player, Honey Cuddles, to join the Garden Benches. Honey Cuddles was happy to receive my message to join their guild, and I was almost immediately invited. 
At the time, the garden benches only had five other players. Me, Honey Cuddles, the guild leader, Zarathenia, and two others. When I joined the guild, Honey Cuddles messaged me saying that I needed to download a chat app called Line. Are they going to steal all your money? I honestly had never heard of this app before, but she explained that it was necessary as this is what the guild uses to communicate, communicate outside of the game. Well, I wanted that, obviously. I installed Line on my phone and was... Is it like WhatsApp? What is Line? <clears throat> is it like WhatsApp? Is it like the Asian version of WhatsApp? Asian WhatsApp, okay. I installed Line on my phone and was able to properly chat with everybody in the guild. I introduced myself, received warm welcomes for everyone. It didn't take long to learn that Honey Cuddles, who was a lady, and Zai, a male, are actually an IRL couple that are currently in their senior year of high school. While typing the story after watching several Drama Time videos, this would have been a red flag. I mean, <laughs> I don't know if his husband-wife guilds apply to every form of organized online gaming. Yes. Yes, it does. But at the time, I didn't care. I had been through my fair share of guilds back in WoW that had couples in the same guild together, or actually co-leading in every one of them. Always. Always drama. But fun. So I chose to stick around as I felt like I needed more drama in my life at the time. <laughs> but mostly because I just wanted to make some friends in Unison League. Cool things that I learned about Honey Cuddles is that she actually does digital art as a hobby. And I would accept commission and would accept commissions of players within the game to create anime-like artworks of their characters. Could be legit. Might not be furries. Yeah, this, I feel the spiral. I feel the sp I feel us falling down into the abyss. Step by step. It's always poor. <laughs> it's always poor. <laughs> Further down the road, she even made a couple of artworks of all our characters in the guild. I didn't know much about Zai, except that the character that he was playing with us on was basically an alt. He had a main. A big main. In a pretty high-end guild. Other things that I learned quickly was that he had an obsession of cat bug and corgi butts. What's that? He had an obsession of cat bug and corgi butts. And would sometimes post gifts of corgi butts. When they walk. Is that dogs? What's cat bug? Corgis are dogs. Is this dog butt? Like the dog? I think so. It's a cartoon character. Alright. I'm checking on our behalf. FBI, don't get me. All right, Catbug appears to be... Oh, sweet Jesus. Okay, let me check Corgi Butt. <laughs> okay. Um, there's a seemingly uh, thing about Corgi Butts in the internet. Huh, I didn't need to know that. Okay. Um, yeah. That's weird. The 13 best corgi butts on Instagram. Hmm. But as we suspected, it is the dog corgis and pictures of dog asses. Uh. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> sure. Um, <clears throat> Catbug is this. This is Catbug. Apparently it says things like, I'm Catbug. Appears to be a, uh, yeah. That's Catbug. That is considerably less weird than Corgi Butt. Corgi Butt is, uh, I don't know about that. Okay. <clears throat> let's go forwards. Yeah, let's, let's push on. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Sometimes he would post gifts of corgi butts when they walk. Zai pretty much gave us tips and guidance during his time playing. <laughs> Another guy was quiet with everyone at first, but eventually opened up. Talks a hell of a lot and turns out he has some pretty dark, dirty humor. Oh, mobile phone guilds, eh? This has put me off. Now, 10 players may seem very small for a guild. 
and I believe it's 10 players because one of the main activities in Unison League is that you can participate in guild battles. In guild battles, you battle against other guilds, which can last up to 15 minutes. It also occurs three times a day, and you have the option to opt for one of three different battle schedules with different times to help suit the time requirements of your guild. In the battles, only five of your guild can be actively playing at a time, and these five are called the front line. The other five are called the back line. You can switch in with the back line at any time when they agree to switching with you as well. Now, I would explain more of how battles work, but it's not important to the story. The Garden Benchers was able to find enough players to fill the guild up for battles. We're ready to go. While being in the guild, I soon learned that there is actually a ranked version of battles that occur every two to three months called Ranked Battles. Now, this is where what most serious, serious guilds prepared for every season. Ranked battles was the same thing as normal battles, but you got a ranking. <laughs> and depending on your performance for the battle would get a score higher in the rankings. Now, the rank stuff is how you earn rank for your guild as a whole for the season, which was over, lasted over two weeks. The highest rank being S rank. It was Honeycuddles and Zai's dream to eventually have an S rank guild. Your ranking, in, your ranking also determined the amount of ranking currency you would receive in order to buy more gear. Hmm, okay. Okay, I see where we're going. After a couple of months of being in the Garden Benchers, all of us within the guild actually started to be get pretty good at friends with each other. There would be multiple nights where we would message each other for hours in the evening, going into the early morning the next day. I would sometimes even wake up to a thousand plus missed messages in the line group chat. There's 10 of you. Some of us even actually got to the chance to meet with some other members IRL, despite living two states or a state or two apart. I was even able to meet Honeycuddles IRL, which was well, uh, who was on a trip after graduating high school to Universal Studios in Florida, which was about two hours from where I lived. It was brief, but pretty wholesome moment for everyone to see in the guild. Mobile games sometimes would have in-game collaborations, which mostly involved popular anime shows. About a year after joining the, bench, uh, the Garden Benches, Unison League had a collaboration event with an anime called is it wrong to pick up girls in a dungeon? It's a really good anime. <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. It's not. Okay. All right. I'm not trying to start an anime war. All right. This is just their opinion. I don't, I don't know it. I'm not getting involved. Okay. I'm not judging. I'm not ruling on this. I don't know anything about it. I'm moving on. <laughs> The monetization method of, of Unison League, of course, was doing what they called summons, which is fucking loot boxes. Now, for those of you familiar with how these types of collaborations work, during the event, there are loot boxes that you can purchase that contain characters and or armor and weapons based on the anime. And the items you receive from these loot boxes, while not always the best loot, were still very powerful. It's also important to mention for the following bit that in most mobile RPGs, the quality of gear is typically tiered by normal, rare, super rare, super super rare, and ultra rare. Which pretty much all the high quality loot from loot boxes being super super rare and needed to be upgraded to reach ultra rare. On the first couple of days of the collaboration, the player base quickly noticed a bug, a glitch in the system. Apparently, a certain loot box option for the collaboration was yielding an abnormally high chance of super super rare gear. So high in fact, that out of the 10 pieces of loot, this is not a bug. <laughs> this is you spending more money. <laughs> they don't care <laughs> you get out of it. As long as you buy the fucking boxes. <laughs> it's not only a bug, they expect you to pay way more than this. Okay, alright, alright. Isaac's defending. Isaac's defending. I personally see all mobile games as scams, but Isaac's defending and he has experience. Okay. It was so high in fact that out of the 10 pieces of loot that you would receive per loot box, you were almost guaranteed at least 4 or 5 high quality super super rare gear that could be upgraded to ultra rare. To add some context how significant this was, 
you would normally get one collaboration super super rare gear after doing maybe two to three times 10 summons so i assume that's 30 loot boxes and this was some of the best gear at the time in unison league needless to say players were taking full advantage while they can you see during this time the devs a team made a post on their official forum stating that they were aware of the bug and that the high rates of super super rare loot from the loot boxes was unintentional and a hot fix would be coming in a couple of days they also stated that with this huge influx of high quality gear that was being spread throughout the player base they would also consider about what to do to fix the situation Possible options that players were thinking was that they would do a rollback on everyone's character so they would lose all their gear they received during the event. Others thinking that doing a rollback would be ridiculous because what about all the money they had spent on the loot boxes? Would they get compensated? Well, about a week into the collaboration where the bug was already fixed days prior, the A-team announced the absolute worst case scenario to implement implementing a rollback. The player base was furious so much so that if the rollback went through a team would potentially kill their own game faster than blizzard with the shadowlands <laughs> oh jesus christ microsoft's coming they're coming so about two days after making the announcement the a team decided to allow the player base to keep the loot that they received from the collaboration and a rollback was not going to happen However, the initial announcement of a rollback alone was enough to make some players quit, one of which was the cat bug Corgi Butt seeing Zai, our guild leader. Zai was too upset about the whole situation, despite A Team changing their minds on doing a rollback and quit the game, giving leadership over to Honey Cuddles. I never really understood why he still quit the game when they ultimately decided not to go through with it. Either he's been looking for a reason to quit for a while, or perhaps it was on principle alone. Sometime after both Zai and Honey Cuddles graduated high school, they broke up. Fortunately, Honey Cuddles didn't allow her breakup to affect us within the guild, and after many failures, was able to reach S rank in ranked. Now our goal, of course, was to maintain it. Along with myself and Honey Cuddles was five other very committed members to the guild. After every ranked season, we would always have to find new members because they either became inactive or simply leave because they were done with the game after hitting what they wanted to do. Everything so far was going great in the garden benches. The conversation in our group chat was still lively while also being able to maintain that sweet, sweet S rank. After some time, however, Hoodie Cuddles decided she wanted to step down. Not necessarily quit, but her IRL obligations now that she was starting college became increasingly demanding and she could not devote as much time to the guild, such as recruiting and making calls as she used to. How much involvement is there in these mobile games? They actively need persistent daily leadership? Really? They do. Can be a lot. Jesus. I'm scared to even touch it, man. I'm terrified, right? I'm terrified. No one wanted to take on the responsibility of being guild leader. Which was to be expected. But I didn't want the guild to die uh, for lack of leadership. I loved hanging out with everyone in the garden benches, despite being the one in the guild with the least amount of knowledge of the game. I decided if no one else will do it, I'll do it. <laughs> Jesus. Now, I never really had any experience recruiting people. Not even in the many years that I have in continuing playing World of Warcraft. When Cuddles explained that all I really had to do was spam. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so some things don't change despite whichever format they take. Okay, all you need to do is spam and wait for guild requests or by searching players from the looking for guild UI in game. I can spam, I thought. I can spam really easy. Sounded easy enough. Despite not having any experience recruiting players for anything, I thought, what is the worst thing that can happen? What's the worst thing that can happen, guys? The end of 2016. Our guild was short two members for an upcoming rank season. Time was running out for it when I started and I needed to find people quickly. A player named Enos messaged me in game saying that she is willing to join, but only if her boyfriend can come too. A package deal. 
But with the ranked season starting soon, I invited them in so we wouldn't be at a disadvantage with eight players. Enos' boyfriend, boyfriend was named Dutch. As a way of getting to know new players better is that we request that they show us IRL pictures of themselves. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Why? I don't even know what Ross looks like. <laughs> I have no idea. I know what you I know what half of you guys look like. Uh, just as a way to put a face to a name. Of course, we didn't force them to do this, and the request isn't something that would be asked until several days after new players have already joined. Dutch's picture revealed him to be a <clears throat> goth guy. The full-on black hair that practically covered his eyes and eyeliner. I don't remember Enos's or Dutch's ages, but I would say that they were probably in their twenties. Dutch was an odd person. More odd than another of our members, Jimmy, and his dark humor. It had been years since this particular point in time, but the main thing that I do remember about Dutch was that he had an even dirtier, darker mind than Jimmy. Funny Cuddles took a screenshot of one of the conversations about creating porn titles about Keg, another committed female member in our guild. They had written entire fan fiction about Keg because they found out that she was a girl. Between Jimmy and Dutch, they had gotten quite creative and were actually suggesting putting these stories out, which is why they had been talking to Honey Cuddles. <laughs> Look, I don't want to brag or anything, but this filthy fucking story we've written, worth publishing. Now, I know you have a Tumblr account. I'm just suggesting that we spread this with the world, all right? I have written... Un <laughs> unrequested pornography about this person and I really do think we should get it out there <laughs> Dutch kind of not having a filter when it came to this kind of stuff most of the stuff he talks about in chat would be a dirty in nature and Enos would just let it happen if I recall correctly at least with Jimmy he didn't go too far with the jokes or banter I'm pretty sure Keg has become pretty used to reading conversations like these at this point oh that's no, fine because of Jimmy jokingly always hitting on her <laughs> But we all understood that we're just having some fun banter. And it is what it is. Oh, that's fine then. As long as it happens all the time, then I can see how it's not a problem now. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, is anybody tempted to join a mobile guild now? Anybody tempted? Anybody want to get in there? <laughs> I, I'm going to pass myself. I'm not joining a balloons guild. Now, the moment you've all been waiting for. I know that there'll be good ones. I just want to point that out there. But this has not helped my situation. <laughs> now the moment you've all been waiting for. is near the end of our ranked season when I and the other guild members have noticed that Enos and Dutch have not been talking. Like at all. During our ranked battles, I would host a voice call online to make call-outs for everyone and neither of them had been joining it. We knew that Enos and Dutch were a couple. And when some of us inquired about if everything was okay, only Enos would reply with something like, Tell you about it later, mate. Can't talk. Tell you later. We knew something had happened. We didn't pry. Dutch was one of the most talkative members in our guild at the time and has been dead silent for a couple of days now. Ranked was over and we successfully maintained our s rank guild rating. I have the date for you here. Finally, on January 23rd, 2017, I receive a direct message from Enos Online stating... Just so you know, he was cheating on me. I was shocked. I responded, how did you find out? Enos replied, it was my mother. I said, oh, your mom found out? Enos then sent me the screenshots of her mother's phone of the conversation that she was having with Dutch. Oh, God. You've written it. Oh, God. You've given me a transcript. <laughs> Great. <laughs> That's awesome. <sighs> now, you don't need to read this on Drama Time, Mike, because this conversation is super cringe. But this is the conversation that took place. The images from the screenshots are below. <clears throat> okay. Uh, 
Note from Bex. There was three pages of this. Three fucking pages. I have cut the majority out of drama because you're not reading that. Not even chat deserves to see the details. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god okay all right thank you bex i appreciate it bex but you read the three pages i assume bex you read the whole thing all right this is from the mother this is your cheek next to your mouth again and cuddles dutch i love you too one of these days you'll steal a kiss on the lips from me mother says i'm scared to last time you hurt me dutch says i can restrain that after knowing how much it hurt but don't think I'll take it lightly. Mum says, okay. Butch says, I'll give you a free one to prove I won't hurt you. Mum says, okay. Butch says, would you like it now? Mum says, sure. I don't speak this language. Does this mean they fucked? Or is this, like, online kisses? X! <laughs> It got explicit? Okay. Okay. Bex is very disturbed. Very explicit. Okay. <laughs> DM full story, please. Oh, no. That's grim, man. <sighs> you really want to know the real kicker? Dutch and Enos never met in person. Basically just e-dating. It still blows my mind to this day. How the fuck has Enos's mother even come into contact with Dutch in the first place? I was so curious that I tried to ask, but she didn't want to answer. <laughs> Brava. <laughs> Brava. That's sick. That's gross. I have so many questions. I really do. I really have so many questions that I need the answers. I really do. It is terrible, and I'm really sorry for you, but, like, how did it happen, though, right? <clears throat> Apparently, this little event didn't keep them from both leaving the guild. During our normal guild battles, it always turned out that one or the other would be participating at any time. This pretty much uh, They pretty much decided to just ignore and try to avoid each other as much as possible. I eventually ended up removing them from the guild because of some tech issues they were having at actually being able to take part. That was at least the reason that I provided to Enos as I scrolled back to my DMs with Enos online when she asked why I removed her and Dutch from the guild. After I removed them, I quickly shared the screenshots with the rest of the guild and they were all laughing their asses off. You dick. Why did you kick him? Wait till you see this. Wait till you see this. Oh, you gotta love it. You gotta love it. You never guess what was going on. <laughs> I pretty much made a rule for myself at that point to no longer recruit couples, despite the potential amusement that it may bring. This is the end of my little tale, Mike. Thank you for taking the time to read it. I hope it was entertaining for you and your audience. About a year, la about a year later after this event, I eventually decided that I was done with Unison League, along with our other committed members of the guild. We were just generally burnt out and lost the drive to continue playing. Most of us tried to keep in touch every now and then, mainly me, Honeycuddles, Jimmy and Keg, even to this day. There was also gradual power creep over the game that I've been playing, so that was annoying to have to always keep up. Unison League also made me no longer want to spend... Oh, God, are you going to tell us how much you spent on this game? I'm going to be sick, aren't I? Unison League also made me no longer want to spend any more money on mobile games because of how much I spent on this game. I didn't keep track of it. Any guesses? Any guesses? It's not super bad. It's not super, super bad. It's not like... It's not like something that would end up on the news, bad. Yeah, you're pretty close there. You're pretty close. Yeah. Uh, it was definitely around $1,500 in two years. <sighs> I moved on to another game called Ark Knights, which I've been playing for almost two years now without spending a single dollar. But I've been enjoying playing it very much. Another thing that I learned is that if any of you ever feel like you didn't, didn't experience enough drama for these funny, cool stories... Just get, your leadership, get yourself a leadership position amongst a group of people and drama will come your way. Thank you, Preach, and have a wonderful day. Arknights wasn't bad. He said he's not spent any penny on Arknights. Arknights. I don't think this was the best advert for Unison League, though. <laughs> I don't think we did the best there. But now we know about Corgi Butts. So that's information that we all now have and we can share in our most wonderful ways. Uh, now we can all dream of it. <sighs> Man. 
I am wiped. Absolutely wiped after what has been just the most ludicrous day. I'm so glad we got to where we wanted to be. Uh, Shadowbringers is finished. Enjoy the VOD if you're going to be there. I'm going to send you on your merry way because I just see Mr. Noble is reaching the end of Heaven's Ward. Thank you, Tyrex. Just saw the video of the armor reveal and it made my week. Yeah, yeah. If anybody does, is okay with Shadowbringers spoilers, it was a culmination of many, many things. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for one of the best days in streaming I've ever had. I'm now going to go drill holes in my office walls. All right. I'll do my closing thoughts once I've actually considered it. I, I, I haven't even considered it, you know? I really haven't. It's, it's been too much today. It's been way too much in every aspect. So be good. I'll see you later. Goodbye, everybody.